Rupp. Hey, Reese, when did Garrett Wolf become the Rodney Dangerfield of college football? No respect. His head coach, Joe Novak, told us that about half of the NFL scouts that come on campus to watch tape don't even bother looking at Wolf. They say he's too small and not worth an NFL draft pick. I spoke with NFL draft expert Mel Kuyper about him. He said his stock peaked early this year, brought him up to a fourth round pick. Now he's a fifth or sixth round grade who will be a backup slot back and a return man, something he has not done in the college game. Little love for a guy who could surpass names like Archie Griffin and Herschel Walker tonight in career rushing yards. But Reese, you get the sense that Wolf stock may rise to the typical Wolf-like performance versus a respected defense on national television. And Wolf has measured up quite well, Rob, against the big boys throughout his career. And there's his head coach, Joe Novak. Novak in his 11th season as a Husky head coach imploring the scouts to stop measuring Garrett Wolf and just watch his tape like Novak did when Wolf was in high school he said his tape went on and on and on the highlights and he's certainly proven to be worthy of that scholarship at Northern Illinois. Gary Patterson's done a phenomenal job at TCU in his sixth season as a head coach and going for his third 11 win season tonight He's got a two and three record in bowl games so far. Patterson of course is first bowl game after he took over for Dennis Franchoni coached in the GMAC Bowl for the Horned Frogs at the end of the 2001 season. TCU won the toss elected to defer into the second half so the Horned Frogs will be kicking it away. Peter Lococo kick off and back deep for Northern Illinois. Marcus Perez and Britt Davis and the bowl season is underway. Davis driven back to his goal line and he'll try to find some running room against a quick, fast TCU team. And there to make the stop, number 51 for the Horned Frogs, Robert Henson. Let's meet the Northern Illinois offense with Britt Davis. Hi, I'm Britt Davis, wide receiver for the Northern Illinois Huskies. And your starting lineups tonight consist of a left tackle, All-American, and All-Mac, Doug Free. The playmakers out wide consist of old man Jared Carter and my brother Brandon Davis at tight end. In the backfield, you have south side of Chicago's very own product, Dan Nicholson at quarterback, and everybody's favorite, Garrett Wolf. So that's the starting lineup in that offense in a hole to start after the good play by Henson. And Wolf gets the carry immediately and a swarm of purple there to stop him at around the five yard line and leading that TCU defense from his middle linebacker position is Jason Phillips. Best made the tackle. Phillips will introduce his mates. Hi, this is TCU linebacker Jason Phillips. Looking at the starting lineups on the D line, we have first team all conference selections number 93 Chase Ortiz and number 97 Tommy Blake. Lining up beside me is my partner in crime, number 46, David Hopper. And anchoring down the secondary is number 27, David Roach, and first team all conference safety, number 26, Marvin White, AKA the Gator. Second down and 12 is the TCU defense off early, and Chase Ortiz was putting heavy pressure on Nicholson. The pass was complete to Wolf, and no room at all. David Hawthorne there on the stop, Mark. That's a wonderful job by David Hawthorne, the linebacker. An open space, one on one with Garrett Wolf taking him down. It wasn't a picture perfect tackle, but it was enough to bring him down with a very, very short game. All right, Lou, you know that the TCU defense is locked in on Garrett Wolf. What are you trying to accomplish in the early part of the game? to try to alleviate some of that pressure. you got to find a mismatch. They have young corners, very, very talented. you got to find a mismatch to force them to have to double cover somebody, which would open up some room for uh, Damien. Two plays, two lost yardage plays, and Nicholson throwing out of his own end zone, and he throws it well behind his intended receiver, Marcus Perez, and Northern Illinois three and out against the Horned Frog defense. So Joe Novak's offense, Novak said that the TCU defense from a speed and athletic standpoint compared favorably to Ohio State. They got Ohio State in the early part of the season when the Buckeyes were still breaking in the nine new starters, but said while the Buckeyes might be a tad more physical that they had nothing on the Horned Frogs from standpoint of speed. Andy did better to punt it away for Northern Illinois and back to return for TCU as Brian Bonner, who's a first team all Mountain West selection as a punt returner. And Bonner has ruined and Bonner had one man to beat. 
Whitney was caught from behind to save a touchdown, but TCU is going to have great field position thanks to the fine return. Well, we're going to see a replay here. I think we're going to see a clip right there at the beginning, but he almost breaks this all the way. The thing to remember is in the first quarter, TCU has outscored their opponents 70 to 10 in their last seven games. Have gotten off to great starts, part of their seven-game winning streak. See, here's the clip on the right-hand side. Was not called. Was able to give Bonner some running room, so the Horned Frogs get the first break of the game, and they have got great field position at the 26-yard line of Northern Illinois. Hobbs and Brown in the backfield. Ballard hit as he throws. Ballard completes his first pass of the game to Derek Moore. Horned Frogs within striking distance of the end zone. Let's meet the offense with Jeff Ballard. Hi, I'm Jeff Ballard, number 16 for TC Horn Frogs. At left tackle, we have number 78, Herb Taylor, a.k.a. Highway 78. At wide out, we have number 18, Quinley Harmon, also known as QPAP. In the backfield, we have Aaron Brown and Latte Hobbs, and they're as good as they come. That they are, and Hobbs has the football, and Hobbs pushes down inside the five-yard line. 215-pound senior from Clarksville, Texas, and he's 38 yards tonight to go over 3,000 in his career. And Lou, you talked about the quick starts that TCU has gotten off to in the latter part of the season. Horn Frogs on track again. Well, they, they are that, and this is something that Northern Illinois knew was going to happen. They got to change the momentum, but also let's remember how patient Coach Novak is. Hobbs going to get the carry again. Hobbs searching for the end zone and stretching for the goal line, and he's got it. Touchdown, TCU, and the Frogs are on top just like that behind Monte Hobbs. It was a great move, but let's remember this. Coach Novak lost 26 of the first 27 games he coached at Northern Illinois, and he kept the faith, kept the plan. What did you think? Did he get in, Mark? Yeah, I did. I think he really got in. I think the offensive line did a great job. One thing about this offensive line, they don't have a player on the entire offensive starting line over 300 pounds, but they did a terrific job of knocking back Northern Illinois. Chris Manfredini, who's had his problems with extra points this year, he's missed four of them. Manfredini now has one block, and Northern Illinois has a chance to scoop and run with it, but will not be able to score. A fine tackle made by Peter Lococo, who is the other place kicker, and also the holder for Manfredini. So TCU has a 6 nothing lead on the strength of the Lante Hobbs touchdown run, but the point after is blocked. But Hobbs once again getting the Horn Frogs off to a great start in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. I wonder who it's for. Could be anyone. My favorite color. What a coincidence. I did ask for something shiny. It's that time of year again when you'll find exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. Well, I have some things to do inside. Me too. The Lexus, December to remember sales event. Hey guys. Thanks, hey, Dana. <clears throat> We, uh, we have a little announcement to make. We both, uh... He went to Jared. Oh, he went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared? He went to Jared? Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry, has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores, from the classic to the contemporary, so you'll find the perfect ring. He went to Jared. I know. He went to Jared. Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Mary J. Blige and Friends, a Circuit City exclusive CD, and in stores now, Reflections, a retrospective, featuring all of Mary's classics plus four new hits. Mary J. Blige and Friends, only at Circuit City, and the new album, Reflections, in stores now. If I had to describe our founder, Jim Cook, first thing I'd say is the guy's crazy. He pours his beer, then he gets it in his nose. He practically chews the beer. Don't use that. You look at him, what the heck he know about beer? He don't look like a beer person. I'm constantly walking back into the brewery, finding Jim sneaking tastes out of the fermenters. I am obsessed with the taste of Samuel Adams because beer's not a job, beer is my life. But we have a lot in common, I might add, because they're both good looking. Nothing we can do about that. Fearless on DVD. Unrated edition now. Capital One Bowl Week.
December 26th through January 1st on ESPN. Didn't take Lante Hobbs long. Less than three minutes into the game, Hobbs with a four-yard touchdown run to cap a three-play, 26-yard drive. Only 54 seconds. Brian Bonner's 19-yard punt return, setting up the Frogs in great field position in this offense, which turned in two of the top seven performances in school history over the last three games. Didn't put up a lot of yards on that drive, but moved with deadly precision and effectiveness and looked to be overpowering in the early going loop. They really did, but the scary thing about TCU, they can run like no defense I've seen, and only two of those players are seniors. They have nine starters back, Mark. They definitely do, and Gary Patterson's done a terrific job of not only recruiting there, but recruiting depth. Lococo kicking it away, and this time it'll be Marcus Perez from the Huskies, hoping to get a little better field position, running sideways, and again, not getting to the 20-yard line. He's knocked down at about the 17 by Robert Henson, who is a special teams demon for the Frogs. Here's the touchdown play, Mark. What you like about Lanta Hoffs, 215 pounds, but he does a great job of running between the tackles, inside blocks, small space. He does cross the plane of the goal line with the ball. That's all you have to do. That is a touchdown, but that is a great drop. Just a couple of plays get in the game. They're already in the offense. Northern Illinois' first possession netted negative three yards. This Horn Frog defense can run, as you've already seen. They like to blitz from a lot of different angles. They get pressure from everywhere. Now we'll see offensive coordinator John Bond has an answer. And Nicholson going to get it in the flat to Garrett Wolf. Wolf. Wolf showing every skill he's got to get it across the 20-yard line. He's so quick in open spaces, and he's so small and short to the ground at five foot seven. And he's so quick. He's got great vision. He knows how to pick his blockers. He knows how to get behind them. He knows how to find every little nook and cranny right here. Coach, stop. Start again. Go to the left. Stop again. Go to the right. I love his feet and his vision. That should have been a five-yard loss. He turned it into a three-yard game. Well, the guys chasing Wolf from the defensive line are accustomed to running. Five of the top 12 defensive linemen on Gary Patterson's team were high school running backs, including Tommy Blake that you saw chasing after Wolf before Jerasia Williams came from his nose tackle position and made the stop. And again, plenty of company for Wolf in the backfield. Snow under. James Best was the first guy to get back there. Chase Ortiz wrapped him up. And another negative play for the Huskies. With the speed and the penetration of TCU, this delay game will not work. The offensive line of Northern Illinois has to do a much better job of holding the defenders at the line of scrimmage. So the nation's leading rusher, it's only two carries, but Wolf with two carries, negative eight yards, and again, Northern Illinois for the second time in two possessions in a third and long situation. Britt Davis, Jared Carter, Marcus Perez, the wide receivers, Dan Nicholson, this time straight ahead with Wolf. Wolf stuck hard just at the 20-yard line and not close to the first down. Marvin White, first team all Mountain West Conference safety, 79 tackles on the season to lead his team, makes the stop on Wolf. Northern Illinois will punt it away. Coach, you talked about the speed of this team. Marvin White, he runs a 4-3-7-40. He's a senior at 6'2", 191. Those are the type of guys that develop at TC. Now you can understand why Marvin White was voted the most valuable defensive player on the TCU team. He returned the punt. Brian Bonner. Bonner led the Mountain West in punt returns. He muffs that one, though a flag is flying. Perhaps a little early company from Northern Illinois. Greg Turner trying to get down there, make a play before Bonner could get started. The flag came in quickly. It appeared that Bonner was interfered with as he tried to field the punt. And the last thing Northern Illinois needs to do is aid TCU's field position again. 26-yard field the first time they got it, punched it in for a touchdown, and this time looks as if they're going to be helped out by a penalty. We'll wait and see what the call is on the field. This would be a questionable call because the... There's no halo rule anymore. Well, the yeah. defender might have been blocked into it. Last time, the, the what you call the, the searchlight or going down there was clipped. There is no foul on the play. The player was blocked into the returner. First down. Look at that. Out of the game a couple of years is still the eagle eyes from the booth for Lou Holtz. They think I've got butterflies. Don't worry, he's got it down. Yeah. <laughs> but I also feel 
fortunate to live in this beautiful paradise. Please share that good fortune with those in need in our community. From your friends and neighbors to San Diego County Credit Union. Thank you. Aww. Oh, and I wish, I wish that everyone in San Diego, in California, in the United States, and the galaxy will be happy. It's your hometown. It's ours, too. San Diego County Credit Union. Exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. The Lexus, December to remember sales events. The true power and beauty of plasma is often hidden, unable to be captured. Only Hitachi Original Technologies unleash the most lifelike color and detail in plasma. Introducing the world's highest resolution 42-inch plasma HD TV, only from Hitachi. Sam Adams Boston Lager is not a beginner's beer. Boston Lager tastes rich, complex, but it's not watered down. We used a pound of hops per barrel for Boston Lager. I can't even drink domestic beers anymore. Sam Adams is a domestic beer. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? ESPN2 College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union, growing together. Kiwanis, serving the children of the world. And the Lexus December to Remember sales event, now through January 2nd. Serene, peaceful setting of the marina here in San Diego. TCU scored on his first possession in just three plays and the extra point blocked. Horn Frogs about to take over for the second time tonight after Northern Illinois second punt Horn Frogs have the ball at their own 30 yard line Jeff Ballard who's 18 and 2 as a starting quarterback and had some pretty good quarterbacks come down the pike in Fort Worth Mark mm, Davey O'Brien I think he won a Heisman Sammy boss leaving Sammy played for the Redskins you know those are pretty good quarterbacks but he's got the highest winning percentage of anybody. Aaron Brown getting the carry. He and Lante Hobbs split time in the backfield, and this time the Husky defense aroused and they're able to make the stop. Let's meet the Northern Illinois Stop Troops with Ken West. My name is Ken West, number 34 defensive end. Starting at the other defensive end, we have Larry Darth Vader English. Starting at D tackle, we have the mayor, Brad Benson. Starting at linebacker, we have Keenan Freak Body Blaylark. Starting at DB, we have Alva. Yes, I do have a twin, Hansbro. Alva Hansbro is back. His brother Adriel has been hurt and will miss this game. Northern Illinois now perhaps getting their sea legs and Larry English who had 11 sacks this season picks up his first in this bowl game slamming Ballard to the turf. And it's a terrific job by Larry English of being relentless here on the outside. One on one with the offensive tackle. Look at the grab pulling the tackle down but staying with the play and finishing the play coach. That is his 12th sack by himself this year. Number nine in the nation in sacks, but only second in the Mid-American Conference. Western Michigan's Amir Ismail was ahead of him in conference play. The one-man wrecking crew and Ballard, who can run a little bit, in trouble. Ballard knocked down on third down. Didn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. So now Northern Illinois found his motivation. Boy, this is a tremendous changeup by the defense. You're going to see the lineman come out right there, English to play it. They blitz the linebacker, which confused the blocking scheme for TCU. And there's English again, finishing off the play. I like his hustle. He loves to get to the ball. He's just a sophomore at 6'3", 240. Corey Hansen was the guy who first hit Ballard. TCU will punt it away for the first time tonight. Ryan Courtney to kick. Matt Simon has returned for Joe Novak's team. Simon's only returned a couple of times in Northern Illinois with the big time pressure and now the Huskies making a play in special teams. How about that for Joe Novak? Two kicks, two blocks. That's great and that's also the fourth block of a kick by Northern Illinois this year. 
Huskies trying to take advantage of special teams. They got an extra point and they got the pressure on Courtney. Basically unimpeded right up the medical. Dustin Utchik getting the block for Northern Illinois and setting up his offense in good field position. Honey? Yeah? Do you know what this light switch does? Which one? The, the one on the right. I never use that one. All right, will you look? Yep. On? Off. On? No. Are you looking? Yes. Off. On. Off. On. Off. On. Off. On. Off. Life comes at you fast. When it does, nobody covers your car like Nationwide. Investments, retirement, insurance. Nationwide is on your side. Lakers. Heat. NBA Christmas Day on ABC. The stars come out in Miami for one of the biggest regular season games of the year. Featuring two coaching legends and the league's two best guards. Kobe takes on finals MVP Dwayne Wade in a game that's become a holiday tradition. Christmas Day, Lakers, Heat. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern on ABC. TCU had plenty to cheer about in the first three minutes of the game. Northern Illinois has awakened. Husky defense forcing a three and out. Dustin Utchick getting a hand on a punt. Huskies will take over the TCU 44-yard line, trailing six to nothing. Two series, one yard of offense now. Northern Illinois tries to get untracked. Huskies ball first and ten. The men in purple are finding number one in white, the nation's leading rusher, Garrett Wolf. Wolf changing size behind the quarterback Dan Nicholson who took over after the injury to Phil Horvath in the Central Michigan game. Wolf trying to pick his way to the outside. Tommy Blake got a hand on him couldn't stop him but he slowed him down long enough for Marvin White to get there. Wolf not finding much running. And it's going to be difficult if they're running laterally. I think they have to run downhill with Garrett Wolf because of the tremendous speed that the defense that TCU possesses. You're right, but the impressive thing, TCU's played him with a six-man front. Not a seven-man front, not an eight-man front, a six-man front, and they're stopping him. Second and 12 now for the Huskies. Nicholson appeared to bobble the snap, and now straight ahead, Wolf finding a little running room, getting to the 40-yard line before David Hawthorne is there to put on the brakes. And that eliminates a lot of speed if you run straight ahead and you run downhill. It lets your lineman explode off the ball. It gives your back a better read. If there's a crease there, he can hit it 100 miles an hour and pick up positive yards. That's not something that Joe Novak and his offensive staff that they're having to adjust to in the game. They told us beforehand, they knew they couldn't run sideways against TCU. They knew they had to try to find creases, cut it up inside, and go straight at this speedy Horn Frog defense. Third down now, two tight ends set. Nicholson buying some time, now running out of time, and just has to throw it away. Nicholson getting plenty of pressure from Chase Ortiz, the 6'3", 255-pound junior from League City, Texas. He, too, a first-team All-Mountain West performer. Coach, what's really impressive about this, watch Ortiz and Hawthorne, the closing speed right there. Now that's you can't coach yet. That's just natural ability. No, but you can recruit and you go recruit a running back and you make him a defensive player. The key I want to know is how do you convince a running back to play defensive line? The power of persuasion of a good head coach. Gary Patterson has some of that and they've got a great tradition too of being able to find guys and put them in the spot, get them in the NFL. The Schobel brothers come to mind. Mm -hmm. Yep. And TCU is a quarterback that Matt 
Great play again by the Northern Illinois Special Teams Unit. John Kramer downing the punt. TCU will take over on its own one yard line. Let's go down to Rob Stone, who has a special guest. Reese, this young, good-looking lady that I'm with here, Irene Overbauer, the COO of the San Diego County Credit Union. Tell me about why you guys decided to affiliate yourselves with this bowl game. It was a great opportunity for us to take advantage of doing something and giving back to the community, and particularly tying it to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So every ticket that is sold, one dollar is given back to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. All right, let's talk football here, though. Okay. You've got a good Notre Dame story for me. I know somebody's ears just perked up upstairs. Tell me about it. All right, well, someone I know very closely is a Notre Dame fan, and he's always had this great dream of getting a blade of grass from Notre Dame. I had the opportunity of visiting the uh, facility last year, doing a college visit with my son, and I somehow finagled my opportunity to go on field get a blade of grass and bring it back and make someone's wish dream come true. Now, have you ever heard of some guy named Lou Holtz? Uh, yes, I know. Coach, Notre Dame? Oh, no, am I in trouble? <laughs> no, no, you're good. She's beaming when I said your name, Coach. <laughs> Thanks, Irene. Thank you. Oh. Most ladies do beam when they hear your name, don't they, Lou? <laughs> oh, yeah, girls under 12, never 70. <laughs> <laughs> Ballard's pass is complete. A short hitch. Getting into Quinley Harmon, his leading receiver, and Harmon picking up a first down. And while Rob was having his conversation with Irene, the Horned Frogs got a break. Lante Hobbs appeared to put the ball on the ground, but the officials marked him down. TCU retained possession. This Big 12 officiating crew has already had some challenges in the early going. Maddie Lidner, a starting left guard, down on the play for the Horned Frogs. Here's the play that I was referring to in which Lante Hobbs Coughed up the football. Yeah, from that angle, it's tough to tell. If they called him down, then it's a good job by the officials for Lante Hobbs. But what I like is they're finally making some calls where they don't have to get a caucus of four officials down there and say, oh, well, should we go upstairs to replay? Well, should, did you see the call? No, make the call and live with it. Gary Patterson looking on. I'm sure the officials appreciate the insight and the advice. You're getting them there. <laughs> <laughs> but really, because it, it. It, it delays the game. Go, go ahead and make it. While people are on the field attending to Maddie Lindner, the left guard who you see going to the turf there, we'll step aside and update you on his condition when we come back. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. Look around, the changes catch your eye And you come to realize One can make a difference You never know what a child may accomplish if given a chance Join with your local Kiwanis Club and discover how you can help make a difference But one can make a difference Married to Blige and Friends, a Circuit City exclusive CD, and in stores now, Reflections, a retrospective, featuring all of Mary's classics plus four new hits, Mary J. Blige and Friends, only at Circuit City, and the new album, Reflections, in stores now. Perfect gift. You can still find it now at sales, like this quarter carat diamond ring or pendant, just $1.99 each. Find the perfect gift at sales, the diamond store. I wonder who it's for. Could be anyone. My favorite color. What a coincidence. I did ask for something shiny. It's that time of year again, when you'll find exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. Well, I have some things to do inside. Me too. The Lexus, December to remember sales events. TCU's Maddie Lindner, their starting left guard being attended to 
behind a shroud of secrecy on the Horn Frog sidelines, try to find out what happened. A little swing pass out to Quinley Harmon, and here comes Ledner. He's locked up there, and he got up and tried to walk off the field, but you knew immediately he was hurt, guys. He, he appeared to be ready to spike his helmet in frustration before he collapsed. We'll get an update on him as quickly as we can. ECU busting the play to the outside. Donald Massey, wide receiver. Picking up good yardage on first down. It'll be just short of a first down, but second down is short as TCU has a productive first down play. Ballard getting the ball to Donald Massey. That was a tremendous play by the quarterback. It was an option. He could have pitched it back to the halfback or head to the other halfback. Great choice by him. Monte Hobbs and Aaron Brown in the backfield together on second and five. Ballard adjusting the play at the line of scrimmage. ECU will show you a little option. They'll throw it around some too. And a tremendous catch almost. And avoids the fingertips of Aaron Brown out of the backfield. And with his scalding speed, Brown might have run for a while if he'd been able to haul this one in, guys. Not only that, Aaron Brown's the second leading receiver on his team with 33 receptions. Right there, he's got it on his fingertips, trying to tip it back to him. But he's, now he's going to run before he catches it. You got to catch it first, Aaron. Got to catch it. The thing that's impressed me, though, as this game goes along is the amount of pressure that Northern Illinois is getting on Ballard. And Ballard is an outstanding quarterback, but nobody's real good if you get a lot of pressure on him. Ballard came into this game having thrown 125 passes without an interception, but the pressure from Tim McCarthy last time, perhaps making him fire high to Brown, and pressure once again this time coming from Keenan Blaylard from his strong side linebacker position. Again, making Ballard just throw the football away. TCU, on a first down, got out of the shadow of their goalpost, and they'll have to kick it away. You know, when you lose an offensive lineman, and you know this, Mark, you think, well, we'll send somebody else in. But it's such a unit, and they all work together. Once you lose somebody, you lose communication. I thought you told me in the studio and when we did games, the quarterback's the most important <laughs> position on the field. Forget the lineman up front. It doesn't matter. You can just throw a guy in there. Just, just get in front of and block somebody. This time, Brian Courtney able to get rid of the punt before the pressure gets there. Took a Northern Illinois bounce and be down just short of the 50-yard line. Let's go up close and personal with the big left tackle from the Horned Frogs, Herb Taylor. My name is Herb Taylor, left tackle, number 78 for your TCU Horn Frogs. Something people don't know about me is that my dad calls me before every uh, game. This all started, you know, back when I played for the uh, Post Oak Redskins, and he used to wake me up every morning, like 7 o'clock in the morning, screaming around the house. He does the uh, Monday Night Football. Dun, 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 dun. My dad's name is Herbert Taylor. Dun, 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 dun. My roommate is Maurice Baldwin, number 77, our right guard. He yells at my roommate also. Are you ready for football? My dad will call me probably around 10 o'clock in the morning. We all thought he was crazy, but then it just kind of stuck. And he is a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Herb, I'm sure Dad will appreciate that. I think Herb Taylor in the offense got started early. Great field position, put a touchdown on the board. Northern Illinois has been able to answer, but the Huskies haven't been able to mount any type of attack against his Horn Frog defense. Not surprising to see them get off to a great start. They've allowed just one first quarter touchdown all year. Garrett Wolf hit in the backfield by Jason Phillips. Phillips, first team all conference player, introducing himself to the nation's leading rusher. Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator for TCU, has done a great job of dissecting this offense, of getting penetration and getting upfield. Hitting those gaps, look at the players get upfield. They're playing on the Northern Illinois side of the football coach, and you can't run an offense if that happens. No doubt. Dick Bump is a great coach. He coached for me at Notre Dame, was a GA for me at the University of Arkansas. It's been unbelievable here at TCU. Northern Illinois facing a third and 15 against Bumpus's defense. He'll have to convert or be out three and out for the fourth time tonight, and that's exactly what will happen. Cody Moore, one of the strongest Horn Frogs, sacking Dan Nicholson. The Huskies will have to punt. Well, they. You know, when you have trouble moving the ball, you can't run it. You can do certain things. You can throw the football, but when they can play man coverage and cover you, nobody's open. When they can stop the run with six men rush, I, I tell you this, the best offense you have is to punt the ball. 
Fourth down and 23 now. Andy Dittbenner will punt it away for the Huskies. He got off a short one off the side of his foot, and to make matters worse, it takes a TCU bounce. TCU will have great field position. Northern Illinois able to get the thing corralled. Just inside the Horn Frog 45, a 20 yard punt. The Horn Frogs come into this game at 10 and 2, 6 and 2 in the Mountain West Conference. They lost back to back games against BYU and Utah after beating Texas Tech and Baylor. They fell out of the AP poll, so Gary Patterson changed the Frogs' motto to beat the odds, and they started beating teams senseless. Jeff Ballard, 20 of 23, passing against San Diego State, hit his first 14 throws. The Horned Frogs won their last seven. They've outscored opponents 176-13 in the first half. Out of the backfield, Lante Hobbs hauling in the pass from Ballard. They tried to hit Brown on the right side earlier. This time, Hobbs on a wheel route gets free. And a nice job of faking the reverse freezing the defense, and Lante Hobbs sneaking out of the backfield and going right down on the wheel route right there. Nice catch. What you like about the running backs for TCU, both of them, Aaron Brown, Lante Hobbs, not only are great runners with the ball, but are tremendous receivers catching the ball out of the backfield. No doubt about it. That's the two most productive plays they've had. Quickly to the line of scrimmage, snapped it quickly. Aaron Brown getting inside the 20-yard line. TCU into the red zone for the second time tonight. Aaron Brown, Lante Hobbs. You guys, don't forget Robert Merrill, mm -hmm. who led this team in rushing yep. the last three seasons, had off-season back surgery and hasn't played this year. TCU hoping to get a medical waiver so Merrill can get a sixth year of eligibility. Merrill, by the way, graduates from TCU and then flew out to the okay, bowl game go, after. Go, go. Brown getting the call, not as much room this time. It'll bring up third down for Ballard and the Frog offense. What they're trying to do is they're trying to go to a hurry up offense, get the line of scrimmage quickly before Northern Illinois can make their adjustments or check off to the various uh, slants and various stunts that they use. Third and short. Coach, you running the option here? I would. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> and I, There's the call. Aaron Brown. Brown turning the corner, getting down close to the 10 yard line. Brown will pick up enough for the first down. Quinley Harmon getting a good block on Keenan Blaylark to give Brown enough room to pick up the first down. And I like how versatile the offensive line is. Look at him get to the second level. Get down there, block some corners, block some safety. Look at big old 75 all the way down the field blocking the safety. That's what you want. You want your lineman to get to the second level and make blocks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they execute the option very, very well. Northern Illinois does not have an option or offense. You think they could use it? Brown. And one guy to beat to get to the end zone, but he couldn't beat him. Mark Ryder, the hard-hitting, strong safety, there to stop Brown. One of the more impressive statistics that I've heard on any football team is Northern Illinois has given up one run over 25 yards this entire year. Winding down the waning seconds of the first quarter, TCU getting on the board first on Alante Hobbs' four-yard touchdown run inside 10 seconds to go. Horn Frogs are going to be content to switch ends of the field on a second down from the 10 yard line. And try to punch in the touchdown. So the sun setting here in San Diego, and it appeared that the sun was going to set quickly on Northern Illinois. TCU's defense has been dominant in the early going. Huskies showing some fight. Second quarter, when you come back to San Diego, we'll see if the Frogs can extend their lead to two touchdowns in the San Diego County Credit Union Point Setia Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week, December 26th through January 1st on ESPN. You are killing me, Birdwood. Hey, take the secret shortcut. I've never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret, Ham. Take it. Not bad, Birdwood. You ever taken this trail, Birdwood? Once, including now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Are you in good hands? Winning is everything. Suddenly, it's just not true anymore. Not now. What matters is that we keep this program alive. They left this to us. It's on our shoulders. When you take that field, lay your heart on the line. 
If you do that, we cannot be defeated. We are Marshall. Made at PG. Starts Friday, December 22nd. Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim Jeans. Guess who just got back today? Built the comfortable. That had been away. Built Never strong. Had much to say. Built right. Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim Jeans. Wrangler Real Comfortable Jeans. 220 miles an hour, anytime. Taking corners at 4G's, anywhere. Like Peak, you've got to be tough enough to take on anything. Peak Long Life Antifreeze is formulated with an advanced organic technology to protect any engine of any make, any model, any time. Whatever you drive, Peak can take it on. Get the antifreeze that can take on anything. Peak Long Life. When you peak, you win. Absolutely beautiful night for football in San Diego. San Diego County Credit Union points Sedia Bowl. TCU trying to push its lead to two touchdowns. A second down play from the Northern Illinois 10 yard line. Big play on this drive. A pass from Jeff Ballard to Lante Hobbs out of the backfield. Northern Illinois yet to get into positive yardage in four possessions. TCU with under 100 yards of offense in the first quarter. One of the reasons for that, though Northern Illinois played better defense after the first possession. First possession of the night for the Frogs started on the Northern Illinois 26-yard line. That turned into the first touchdown of the night. Ballard again throwing it for a running back and getting a hand on it. Defender from Northern Does Illinois. Making the stop there is Ken West, or making the deflection from his defensive end position. Ken West, who introduced his defense earlier, putting TCU in a tough third down situation with a very athletic play. And that was an athletic play by defensive end Ken West, but offensive tackle Wade Sisk, you can't slap the guy up. If it's a, if it's a quick screen like that, you got to be an actor. Take your set, get a little punch, and then turn him loose. Gold Hogg providing offensive line tips here. Just a little help. Would help indeed. He had some success in this stadium. Ballard can run now. He's got good feet. He's hunting the end zone. Ballard still on his feet. Jeff Ballard into the end zone. Touchdown, TCU. Jeff Ballard had over 400 yards rushing this year. And he showed the nimble feet to salvage a third down situation and get into the end zone for the Horn Frogs. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season, but right here, look at the pressure by Northern Illinois. They've got their wide receivers covered downfield, but look at this. He does not want to be denied. Spinning acrobatically. Look at this, Coach, taking the hit, not being denied to score that touchdown. Tremendous effort. 125 passes he had into an interception. Unbelievable. Protects the ball and runs. 10-yard touchdown run on third and nine. Manfredini, who had his first extra point attempt blocked, punches that one through. The tackle that Ballard broke to get in, Tim McCarthy, who never locked up, and McCarthy, 104 tackles on the season, second leading tackler on this Husky defense, but he was unable to corral Senior quarterback from Friendswood, Texas. But it's a heady play by Ballard. He's got to look down here to look for his receivers. They're all going to be covered. Northern Illinois does a great job. There is some penetration, but he's looking left. It's not there. He's looking right. He sees the coverage, the zone dropping back. Now he takes off running, Coach. Now this is where the athleticism takes over, the determination, getting in for the score. Tremendous. But but they had an ET stunt, what you call end in tackle out. Well, the end came in, the tackle did not come out, which is why there was no contain and gave him an open field to run. So Jeff Ballard putting the Horned Frogs up 13 to nothing. 18 and 2 as a starter coming in, and he has his team off to a 13 nothing lead over Northern Illinois tonight. This the first bowl of the season, and the bowl road trip will continue. The Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. John Beck and the BYU Cougars, the high scoring offense that won the Mountain West. They go for their 10th straight victory against Oregon out of the Pac 10. Duck, Jonathan Stewart, and a lot of offensive weapons. Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl on ESPN Thursday night, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Coverage begins 7.30 Eastern time. TCU after the touchdown, kicking it away, and Marcus Perez returning it for Northern Illinois. He gets just across the 20-yard line. Let's go down to Rob Stone now. 
Guys, good news on the condition of Matty Linder. You saw him spiking his helmet in the turf coming off. He was also pounding the bench when he came off as well. He's been labeled as a bit of a dramatic guy, so that's good news because he was overly dramatic. They checked his left knee. They re-taped it up. They're putting his uh, cleats back on. They're putting his shorts back on, so it looks like Linder is going to be a go. Well, Stoner, you know, Mark said earlier that you have to be a good actor, be an offensive line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, touche. <laughs> Et tu brute. First down and 10, Northern Illinois' offense has been stifled. Okay, Wolf trying to run straight ahead, very short yardage. 13th play of the night for Northern Illinois, and that's going to give them a grand total of negative six yards approximately on the night. Guys, what does Northern Illinois need to do on the offensive line to try to stem some of this penetration from TCU? I think they've got to tighten their splits because there's so much penetration by TCU's defense and try to get something going, maybe go two tight ends, slam it in there a couple times, and then take their shots over the top. And Nicholson is a quarterback who can do that. He's filling in for the injured Phil Horvath, but Nicholson, a gunslinger type, and he's firing toward the sideline. Pass was caught, but out of bounds. Marcus Perez making the grab. Nicholson leading him too far to the outside. And the Huskies will face yet another third and long, third and seven. You do not want to be in third and long. I don't even think you want to be at first and ten against this defense from uh, TCU. But I agree with Mark. You close the splits down, run more play action pass, get in the shotgun. Get in the shotgun if you're going to throw where you can get the ball, get rid of it, and be able to look down through it. Third and seven for Nicholson. Moving the pocket, trying to avoid some of that. Nicholson was getting heavy pressure. Tommy Blake getting right in Nicholson's face. He had to unload it. Incomplete. Northern Illinois forced the punt. Nicholson was looking for Britt Davis. Blake was having none of it. He got a little stinger on this, but he's going to roll over. He got hit right in the hip. But Tommy Blake has so much speed. You said he was the former running back. He runs a 4-5-40 four, at 250 pounds, 6'3". He's got excellent closing speed, can get to the quarterback. It's everything that they're looking for at the next level as the defensive end, rush linebacker position. There's been some talk that perhaps Tommy Blake would entertain the notion of coming out and going into the NFL draft this year, although he seems content to stick around. That's gained a little more upper body strength. Plenty of speed already, but he is on the radar. Ryan Bonner being driven back inside his 20-yard line. Bonner's got the great speed, and he's got some helpers on the side. Bonner getting up close to the 35-yard line and giving the Horn Frogs pretty good field position. Tommy Blake in the Frog defense has been dominant so far. It's the most magical time of the year. Experience advanced performance and technology at Acura's Drive Home for the Holidays sales opportunity. Take advantage of special financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. James, is that you? Yeah. Last time we saw you, you were a size small. Goodness. Find every size of men's sweaters and flannel shirts on sale. Kmart, where Christmas comes together. If you want to quit smoking, today's your day. Introducing new Commit Cherry Lozenges. Quitting smoking just got a little tastier. College football season has begun. So remember, it's not whether your team wins or loses. It's watching them in high definition that matters. For the first time, every college football telecast will be available in high definition on ESPN HD and ESPN2 HD, giving you the chance to experience it as never before. Once you have your HD TV, contact your cable or satellite provider and upgrade to ESPN HD and ESPN2 HD. ESPN HD's and ESPN2 HD's coverage of college football is presented by Pioneer Pure Vision Plasma. Oh my Credit card miles expired, but don't worry. Daddy's got a plan. Orlando, here we come. Is there meal service on this flight? Oh, yummy. Who wants some? Hang on. Oh, evil. <laughs> Whoa! Isn't this fun? We should have switched to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration or in caps and no blackout dates. <laughs> oh, that's different. What's in your wallet? 
Welcome back to San Diego. The Horned Frogs with a 13-0 lead, and things are not going to get any easier for the Huskies. Wide receiver Greg Turner injured his ankle in the first quarter on the punt team. They are telling me a broken left ankle. He's in the locker room. Obviously, he's already been x-rayed, and he is done for the day, guys. All right, Rob, unfortunate for Turner. Six-foot sophomore out of Glendale Heights, Illinois. Caught five passes this year, scored a touchdown. Lost for the rest of the evening with Joe Novak's team. TCU taking over, up 13 to nothing. Jeff Ballard scored on a 10-yard touchdown run. Option to the left, Hobbs taking the pitch. Latte Hobbs exploding up toward midfield. Knocked down from the 47-yard line. A great block from the fullback, William Jackson, to spring Hobbs on the option. Not only that, keep an eye on number 75, the center Schluter right here. Nice double team block. He's going to take the nose tackle by himself, and that frees up the guard to get to the second level, and that's key. Once that guard gets to the second level, the top off guy, which is the linebacker, can't get there, and that opens up the hole for your running back, Lante Hobbs. If you're going to be successful going wide, you must seal the inside, which is what exactly happened, and you just explained that. DCU will scheme you, show a lot of formations. Hobbs has it again on the yeah, single back. No, I, I beg your pardon. It appeared Hobbs had it. Ballard kept it. After riding it into the belly of Hobbs for a while, and he pulled it out. He acted like he had the ball. He was like moving back and forth. I thought he had the ball too. Well, I believe he think he, I think he thought he did for a moment. He was reading the defensive end, and he thought the defensive end was going to close when he didn't. He then had to follow the back, get what he possibly could. TCU's had great success offensively, and when you have a great defense, but more importantly, a quarterback protects the ball, a quarterback that can run, and a quarterback that can throw it, and that much team speed, they're awfully hard to defend. Mentioned they'll show you a lot of different looks. Ballard looking for his tight end, Shea Reagan. Things didn't develop as Ballard had hoped on that play. Tim McCarthy, who missed the tackle on the touchdown run by Ballard earlier this time able to apply some pressure on the play. What they're trying to do on that particular play, run a screen to both sides, thinking that all the linebackers will run out, and then your tight end sits there and sneaks down the field, and it's usually a great tight end delay, but well defended by Northern Illinois. Third down and eight. No backs behind Ballard. Good protection from his offensive line. And Ballard, who we mentioned, hadn't thrown an interception since October. Very nearly threw one that time. Dustin Utchik in his free safety position. Almost picked off the pass that was intended for Quinley Harmon. Led him just a tad too far. Certainly can. Northern Illinois is doing a great job at changing up their coverage. Russian seven. Dropping eight the next time, just doing different things, Mark. That was an ill-advised pass by quarterback Jeff Ballard. He had good protection, so just threw the coverage. All right, Courtney on the punt. TCU, Matt Simon signaling for the fair catch. Yeah, his 14-yard line. He put it on the ground, but Simon able to fall on it and cover up just in time to avert disaster for the Huskies. This is the way Northern Illinois' season has gone. Garrett Wolf leading the NCAA in rushing, went for 353 yards against Ball State, 13th best single game performance in history. The quarterback and leader, Phil Horvath, suffered a torn knee ligament against Central Michigan, was lost for the season. But Joe Novak's team rallied to win its final two regular season games, including the victory over the Chippewas, the MAC champions, to clinch their seventh straight winning season, win seven games, and earn a spot San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Because let's be honest, this is an at-large spot. This is not a conference tie-in spot. And the Huskies have been six and six. We will not be seeing Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf finding room momentarily. Marvin White there to make the stop for TCU against Garrett Wolf. Coach, on this play, they're going to pull both linemen, right guard and right tackle. Garrett Wolf's going to follow him around the kick out there, but the seal on the backside and it's the vision and the backside cut of Garrett Wolf to pick up five yards in this play. There's so much speed on this TCU defense, Coach. They got to run a reverse, a fake reverse, reverse pass to negate that speed. Agreed. Nicholson rolling again, getting pressure and so much pressure he threw behind his intended target, David Kornikevich. Kornikevich unable to turn his body around and make the grab. Third down facing Nicholson and the Huskies. 
what TCU is stopping to run with six very quick defensive linemen. And Mark, they're playing straight man across back there, and Northern Illinois cannot get a guy free. That's when people play a lot of man, if you can run some option or run the quarterback presents problems. That's not really in the Northern Illinois package. They don't feel that that's strong suit of their quarterback and the strong suit of the offensive line is not slowing down the rush from TCU. Jerasia Williams, the big 316 pound senior, snows under Nicholson. The Horn Frog defense is dominating this game. Jerasia Williams just splits the blockers. It's miscommunication on the offensive line. Nobody touches him. The left guard goes left, the center goes right, right up the middle. You've got to have better communication up front. If you can't understand it when you get to the line of scrimmage, make it simple, coach. I got him, you got him, you've got him. Make oh, it plain and simple so there's that's no confusion. Uh, you use the C block. You block the first cat you see. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing lookout blocks right yeah. now. You're telling poor Dan Nicholson to look out. Andy Dittbenner driving Bonner deep. Bonner fields it over his shoulder. His long punch providing Bonner some running room, and Bonner, who led the Mountain West, was 15th in the nation in punt returns as his third solid return of the night. And TCU is set up after the 19-yard run back by Bonner. I think I've got butterflies. Don't worry, he's got it down. We are also fortunate to live in this beautiful paradise. Please share that good fortune with those in need in our community. From your friends and neighbors to San Diego County Credit Union. Thank you. Aww. Oh, and I wish, I wish that everyone in San Diego, in California, in the United States, and the galaxy will be happy. It's your hometown. It's ours too. San Diego County Credit Union. It's the most magical time of the year. Experience advanced performance and technology at Acura's Drive Home for the Holidays sales opportunity. Take advantage of special financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. Taking a quick break? Uh, I'd like to see that for someone very special. The Leo Diamond, independently certified for superior brilliance and selected to match beautifully by K Jewelers. Chris, how did you know? Every kiss begins with K. It's ready. Introducing Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. Fusion's hydrating emollients and lubricants form an invisible layer that protects your skin from the first stroke to the last, adding more comfort to your shave. Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. This year, when she asks you what you want, it might be nice if you had an answer, like the Craftsman Digital Level. Super accurate, right side up or upside down. If you want it, ask for it. Craftsman at Sears. ESPN2 College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by Acura, Acura Advance, and K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. A view of downtown San Diego, but Damian Tomlinson's town and LT's alma mater on top in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, 13 to nothing. Jeff Ballard has led a couple of touchdown drives for the second time tonight. We'll start a drive in Northern Illinois territory. Over 10 minutes to go in the first half. Horned Frogs already up by 13. Northern showing no signs of being able to do anything on offense. Ballard fires, has his man complete. I mean, finding receiver out on the right side. Ballard stands in the pocket nicely and delivers it to Walter Bryant. If you get good protection, you're usually going to be a high percentage completion passer and you aren't going to throw many interceptions. He's sure getting great protection marks. So you're saying it all starts with the offensive line again, Coach. Uh, this knowledge is just, <laughs> it's just oozing off me onto you. Aaron Brown getting the call. Brown greeted rather rudely. Marked down at about the 43-yard line. That's going to leave him about four yards short of the first down. Tim McCarthy 
and to make the stop for Joe Novak's team. Northern Illinois, guys, you feel the flow of this game. TCU's dominated it on defense. Mm -hmm. They cannot afford to give up the score to TCU here. No, but I tell you, Northern Illinois is playing very good defense themselves. Other than the two wheel routes, which they gave up, Mark, mm -hmm. they played defense very, very well. Plus field position. If you look at TCU, they've had outstanding field position the entire game. Northern Illinois has been backed up when they've been starting their drives. Oh, there's going to be a timeout. They call timeout. It, you know, it's amazing uh, the young man fell down out there trying to get the timeout. But the coach could call a timeout, and there's always an official right by you. There's Keenan Blaylark, who appears to have an issue with his headgear. And I'm tired of hearing you complain about it. Big 12 officiating crew, Greg Burks. Not able to uh, hear Greg's mic, perhaps, uh, perhaps Blaylark's headgear ran into Greg's mic because neither one appears to work. Well, he's trying to get a timeout when he can't get it. He's but okay, I'll just fall down. <laughs> what am I going to do now? But see, the rule was changed. The coach can call a timeout, and there's always an official by you on the sideline. Blaylark is a psychology major, and perhaps putting that to good use, trying to psych out. out the officials. <laughs> he did. It worked. <laughs> and now. Blaylark is changing headgears like he's going to borrow the headgear that belongs to number 76 Nick Hammond Jaron who's a linebacker going to get that thing fitted and you know linebackers they don't care just put something on their head they want to go out and play and hit something see yeah, ball hit ball Bla as old Spielman would say that is true but Blaylark is a he, he's a bit of a renaissance man he's an accomplished saxophone player plays at the church on a weekly basis where his father's a pastor. So he, he's not all about the violence all the time. No, no, that's just during game time. Congratulations to him. But let me get back to what Mark said. He said it all starts with the offensive line. I say quarterback. But what we're talking about, it's about a team. And that's what football is. It does take offensive line, does take quarterback, does take coaching, does take research, takes everybody, and everybody has to contribute. Third down and four. TCU has got multiple contributions in the defense. Empty backfield as Brown went in motion. Brown coming out of the backfield, and Ballard's pass toward him is low. It'll be fourth down for TCU. We're starting bowl season in San Diego with the San Diego County Credit Union Point City of Bowl. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, Mark May, along with Rob Stone down on the sideline here at Qualcomm Stadium. TCU jumped to a quick lead on Northern Illinois and the defense has shut down Garrett Wolf, the nation's leading rusher. Nine carries, six yards. It's not unexpected given the fact that the Horn Frogs, fourth in the nation in rush defense. And with the way their defense is playing, Gary Patterson eager and willing to pen Northern Illinois deep in its own end rather than go for it around the midfield area. Northern Illinois will deal with a long field again starting from its own 13 when we come back. And apparently we're not going anywhere. So they'll start from the 13th when, when they put the ball into play. Inside nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Gary Patterson's defense has stifled Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf, by the way, has already locked up a virtual mathematic impossibility for him to fall below the six point five four for carry average. We might fall off of that a little bit, but fall below the all time NCAA record for a career. Wolf dodging, darting, then powering up to the 15. A lot of work for a couple of yards. He's earning every single inch he's getting tonight. He's not getting a lot of help from his offensive lineman up front. And every time he tries to run the ball downhill and he tries to hit the hole, there's always a body there. There hadn't been a penalty in this game, but I would tell you the offense better start. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> if they're going to move the ball. Northern Illinois has a left tackle, number 62, Doug Free, who's an NFL prospect much of the night. He's expected to be one-on-one -on -one against the fine defensive end, Tommy Blake, and those two are locked up again, and there is a little reverse action, and Britt Davis just gets smacked. David Hawthorne there to lay the lumber. James Best grabbing him inside. The Horned Frogs are relentless. Lou, how do you compare this defense to some of the better ones we've watched all season? I think this defense is as good as any we've seen. Now, you don't know 
how much they're being challenged, but I would love to see them play against a great offensive football team. Because, boy, they can fly, and they love the game, and they're physical, and they can cover. If you consider Texas Tech a great team, this TCU defense held the Red Raiders to a mere three points, and finally a great play from Northern Illinois. Matt Simon is loose. Matt Simon deep into TCU territory and signs of life from the gunslinger Dan Nicholson. Big play for Northern Illinois. Sets up the Huskies with their first first down of the night. It all starts up front, Coach. Once you give your quarterback good protection, Dan Nicholson, for one of the few times he had a chance to look downfield, bide his time, sidestep, throw the ball down the middle of the field to his receiver, and right here, it's a big play for the offense. It was, but it was man coverage and they blew a coverage. The guy came free, the linebacker had had him, didn't pick him up. 62 yards on third and 12. Huskies have their first first down of the night. And he comes at the TCU 27. Nicholson in the pocket wants more. Nicholson will get nothing. And this time, Blake able to whip Doug free. And Blake, who had five sacks on the season, comes up with another one. And it's one-on-one yeah. -on -one protection. You're the left tackle. That's your fault right there. First of all, you never let the defender inside. If you don't have inside help, you take an inside-out set and make sure you redirect him. And if it's a bull rush, make sure he runs over top of you. And, guys, Dan Nicholson is still down on the turf after taking that big hit from Tommy Blake. As it is problematic for Joe Novak's team because Nicholson was the backup quarterback already. Mm -hmm. Phil Horvath was lost to a knee injury against Central Michigan late in the season. That will leave a redshirt freshman, Ryan Morris, to come in for the Huskies. It's the most magical time of the year. Experience advanced performance and technology at Acura's Drive Home for the Holidays sales opportunity. Take advantage of special financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. Lakers, Heat, NBA Christmas Day on ABC. The stars come out in Miami for one of the biggest regular season games of the year. Featuring two coaching legends, and the league's two best guards. What a move. Kobe takes on finals MVP Dwayne Wade in a game that's become a holiday tradition. Christmas Day, Lakers, Heat. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern on ABC. Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. If you have blurred vision due to cataracts, the Pantone Eye Center is the clear choice. We utilize an exciting new technology designed to allow patients to see clearly without bifocals or reading glasses. With our bifocal lens implants, most patients can read, watch TV, even play tennis without glasses. Our no-shot, no-patch cataract surgery combined with bifocal lens implant is the most advanced form of cataract care ever. Before you consider cataract surgery, call the Pantone Eye Center and see if you're a candidate for the latest in bifocal implant technology. Call now. Back at the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Great news for Joe Novak in Northern Illinois. Dan Nicholson is up after Tommy Blake just unloaded on it. And your left tackle, Doug Free, the left guard is blocking down, which means you're on an island. You're one on one. You cannot let your quarterback take a hit like that. You have to set inside out, make sure that defender goes up the field and doesn't have a clear path to the quarterback. And rule number one for a left tackle is on our all inside fakes. Never give up the inside, as you mentioned there, Mark. But that's awful hard to be on an island with a young man rushing the passer like that's happening there. Coach, he's a Tommy Blake. I, I know, 49 starts. And, and, and an NFL prospect, now Lion Morris, in a quarterback. Morris has played in two games this year, but hasn't thrown a pass or run the ball. Morris wanting to throw it now. Now Morris takes a big hit. And a TCU defense, which has nine tackles for loss already and three sacks. Morris being welcomed to San Diego by Robert Henson. 
They are just laying their ears back and unloading like on the Husky Like office. hungry dogs in the meat house. They're going right now. They're going after the quarterback, pinning their ears back. It's second and long, third and long. They're just attacking. They're not even worried about the run. Nicholson coming back into the game. Nicholson, kid from the south side of Chicago. They, they say he's a tough guy. They say he's a leader, the perpetual 5 o'clock shadow. The guys respond well to him. He's 4-1 as a starter. Had to finish last season after Horvath was injured as well. Nicholson stepping up in the pocket and firing to the outside. Britt Davis was well covered over there, though it appeared that Davis got a hand on it. Nick Sanders, the redshirt freshman from Kilgore, Texas, was right in Davis's hip pocket. And more pressure by Tommy Blake here. Here he makes the fake inside and goes outside. Now he's playing with Doug Free's head. He's playing with his mind because he beat him to the inside, so now he's going to overcompensate for the inside, and Blake, the smart pass rusher, fakes inside, slaps the hands down, goes outside and puts pressure on the field. You worry about this place kick being blocked on the long field. He's a 51-yarder. Chris Nendick is 0 for 1 from outside of 50 yards this season, and he left this one just a tad short this time. Now 0 for 2, and after the big 62-yard pass play to Matt Simon, the Huskies come up empty. Joe Novak's frustrating evening on offense continues. Nendick had a good swing at it with the leg, but didn't quite have the distance to get the 51-yarder through. 13-0 TCU on top of Northern Illinois. 6.48 to go here in San Diego. Getting closer and closer to a piece of history. On the brink of history, Bob Knight, 878 career wins, just one away. Number 879 could come against Bucknell on December 23rd. We'll be able to see full coverage. Of the general's quest to match Dean Smith on the all-time wins list on December 23rd. 23rd first pass from Ballard to start this series goes incomplete. He was looking for his tight end Chad Andrus. Brings up a second down and 10 now TCU offense has been sputtering a little bit. What would you do? Luke? Well I, I think just continue to be a little bit more consistent. Uh, Ballard's usually a 70 percent completion quarterback. And he's four out of 10 thus far. But they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Here's that going to be called a illegal procedure. Flags all over the place. Ballard not expecting the snap and the whistles blow. <laughs> Big 12 officiating crews had a couple of bizarre things to work out. This will be the first penalty of the evening. But among the bizarre nature of things, apparently the batteries in Greg Burke's microphone still out. And illegal procedure will back TCU up five yards. Coach, I think if you're Gary Patterson, the head coach of TCU, you've got to get a rhythm going on offense. Right now, you're out of sync. Establish the run again. They did a wonderful job of establishing the run earlier with Lante Hobbs and Aaron Brown. I think they should go back to that. I know it is second and 15, but still, you've got to get back to your bread and butter. It's a very balanced offense, and winning down, run a little option. Lante Hobbs works through a hole, gets up to the 40-yard line. The Horned Frogs, the ninth best rushing offense in the country this year, 17th in total offense. Perennially, this team, under offensive coordinator Mike Schultz, up around or over that 400-yard mark, and most times balanced close to the 200-yard rushing, 200-yard pass. They've been over 400 yards the past three years. In the last three games this season, they were unbelievable offensively. They're out of rhythm a little bit, but when you're playing so well on defense, you know, that, that happens on offense. Monte Hobbs, fifth on the all-time rushing list at TCU, going over 3,000 yards for his career. And the third down play, Ballard out in the backfield, and Ballard has Shea Reagan. Reagan with his 13th catch of the season. All of them have gone for first downs. If you want a first down, go to your tight end. Shea Reagan, he's money in the bank. Get him the football, he gets first down. This guy's third on the depth chart. <laughs> hey, they Talk about depth. They've had four tight ends score a touchdown this year. That's more than I had in my entire coaching career. <laughs> tight end meant extra tackle a lot of time. For you. <laughs> well, yeah, it did. I told the you, throw it to the tight end. That's all I would hear. Throw it to the tight end. <laughs> Derek May said no. <laughs> First and ten for the completion from Ballard to Reagan. Ballard buying a little time. Ballard going for Reagan again, but fires it over his head. The sophomore from Idaho, Texas, was wide open inside the Northern Illinois 30. TCU last year had 49 days before the end of the season, the bowl game. 
This year, they only had 17. There's a difference of 32. And, and you're right in that in-between spot where you just can't keep the momentum, particularly on offense. I'm not buying it. How many days do you have every week during the season? Well, you have six in Thank theory. You. But it's a different <laughs> team. You give them time off, Mark. Out of the backfield, Hobbs catches the pass from Ballard, and Hobbs uh, dragged down by Dustin Utschick. Utschick pulling down Hobbs. It appears to be just short from the first down marker. It'll bring up a third down. It'll be a long two to go for the first down. Call it three now facing Ballard. They send in a couple of tight ends. William Jackson into the game. Chad Andrus returning here. See what Mike Schultz has in his bag of tricks. We wind down toward the five minute mark in the first half. Offensive coordinator Mike Schultz loves to out formation the opposition. <laughs> he said we'll look at, give you a lot of looks, a lot of schemes. Lante hot formation or not. Read it in the backfield and knocked down well short of the first down. Now Patterson has a decision on fourth down. Punted it away. It was a little farther back last time because his defense was playing so well. but. No the offense makes a move toward the sideline. Ballard perhaps walking that slow walk of resignation and uh, hoping to get a play rather than the punt team sent on. It appears that Ballard will have the opportunity to try to pick up the first down. Horn Frog's got nothing on the last one. It'll be fourth and three. Yeah, but watch for the fake golf tackle and the bootleg by Ballard. Only one wide out. Two tight ends. He's back in motion. They'll show a little option. Ballard ducking up inside, and Ballard is not going to get the first down. The Northern Illinois defense coming strong. Larry English snuffing out Ballard on the option, and Patterson's team is denied. And Larry English has been the bell cow for this defense of Northern Illinois. He's all over the field making plays. Here he goes up the field, then comes back and retraces his steps, and he tackles the quarterback, Jeff Ballard, and holds him short of the first down. Tremendous effort. Should have possibly pitched the ball. First and ten but then the again, you think you can get it by decking up inside. <laughs> but let's give credit to Northern Illinois defense. They played a marvelous game with the exception of two plays. 13 nothing. Northern Illinois D trying to keep their team in it. Now if the offense can provide an answer. Big 62 yard pass play and missed field goal into that. A little trick oration, a little toss back, throwback special, and throwing deep for Britt Davis. Davis is well covered out there, and it looks as if the ball was picked off. An interception on the deep one. Tremendous play out there by number 15, Tory Stewart. Stewart with his third interception of the year. Wide receiver Britt Davis has to fight for this ball. If you look at the defender, go for the ball. It's a nice job of getting his body between the football and the wide receiver. Look at that. That's a nice job. He's trying to fight over him, but you got to knock that ball down. Stewart, a junior from Kosciuszko, Mississippi, gives the Horned Frogs the ball back. You bet it's personal. It's a personal thing for every Horned Frog. Personally, I like the attention. TCU is like a big school, but with small classes. My professors all know my name. They know me. I came to TCU to find out about the world. But I learned a lot about myself and my part in all of it, starting with just me and what I can do. At TCU, I'm learning to change the world. NIU, serving the heart of America's heartland. Educating new leaders for the nation's third largest region. Bringing expertise and innovation to communities and public schools. Creating new jobs and new workers. Conducting research that improves our quality of life. Northern Illinois University. Across the region, from Chicago to the Mississippi, NIU works. TCU just forced a turnover. Tory Stewart making a fine play on a deep ball thrown by Dan Nicholson. The Horned Frogs taking over at their own 16-yard line. Northern Illinois' defense has been stout, particularly in the late part of the season. It's been a potent TCU offense. We hadn't seen the Horned Frogs. They show a lot of formations. They'll run a little option as they do here. The speedy Aaron Brown gets the corner, and Brown getting up close to the 25-yard line. 
Northern Frogs have popped a couple of long plays, but Louis, you've mentioned for the most part, Northern Illinois has been able to slow down the TCU attack. And talking to the coaches at TCU, they expect to run the option somewhere between eight and 11 times a game because what that does, not only does it give you a chance to make some big plays, it forces a defense to play you very conventionally. Second down and short. Brown gets the call again. Brown dancing to the outside. A very sure open field tackle. Once again, Darren Utchick, the senior from Winnicone, Wisconsin, led this team in tackles. Been a sure open field tackler for the Huskies tonight. And he's been outstanding tonight in the entire season. And four out of his last six games had at least 12 tackles in four of his games. He's a sure tackler, as you said, Reese, but he likes to come up and he's going to lay some leather. Hutchick, who's getting married next to line his high school sweetheart. In his final game here, Brown with the pass out in the backfield. Ballard flipping it out there. Brown picking up good yardage, getting the first down and keeping Horn Frog Drive alive, dancing out of bounds, stopping the clock. The clock not an issue yet, but just over three minutes to go in the first half. I right, continue to talk about the speed of this team. It's not only on the defensive side of the ball, it's also on the offensive side of the ball. And Aaron Brown, slashing type running back, runs a 4-4-40. He ran a 10.4500 meters in high school. That's pretty fast. Yeah, that's that's some run that far. That's what Gary Patterson tells us he looks for. Ballard completes yet another pass. Derek Moore making the grab. TCU makes his living. Let's be honest about it. They're not going to beat Texas and Texas A&M for recruits. Where Patterson has to make his living is in the state of Texas, rich in talent. The guys rank between 100 and 200 in most cases and find the guys that are going to be stars sometimes, even if they have to change positions. Well, let's not underestimate the type of talent they have. They're 4 0 against the Big 12. Have beaten Oklahoma, Texas Tech, Baylor, and Iowa State. Last two years, Iowa State in the bowl game last year. Aaron Brown picking up the first down, getting into Northern Illinois territory. Couple of guys with a vested interest in this game on the sidelines now with Rob Stone. Hey, Reese, which one of these guys doesn't belong in the picture? <laughs> you, Rob. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Michael Turner, the burner, the former career rushing record holder at Northern Illinois University. Some guy named Ladanian Tomlinson who happens to own San Diego right now. We'll start with you, TCU alum. Coach gave you a call today before the game. Tell me about the little surprise they had for you. Well, they left all kinds of uh, nice goodies in my locker. Some TCU stuff, something to be proud of and well around. And they made a locker for you as well. Absolutely. You know, I had my own locker. I kind of felt like I was a coach now, you know, so maybe something to work on in, in, in another career as coaching. But, no, I felt like one. But, uh, no, it was great what they did today. Coach is just trying to get a donation from you. I know how he works. <laughs> Hang here with me. We turn to Michael. Now, Michael, you uh, spoke to the team yesterday at practice here on the field. What did you tell them? Also, how proud I was of them and uh, how the hard work paid off for NIU and how the program is on an upswing right now. And, uh, just go out there and play hard and, and play for each other. What are your thoughts on Garrett Wolf? Oh, he's a great running back. He got the biggest heart. And, uh, you know, his size and everything doesn't determine how he can play on the field. All right, now the big thing here is these two guys have a bet on the winner of this game. I'll let, I'll let LT tell me what the bet is. Tell me what the bet is. Well, Michael is going to end up wearing <laughs> the number five TCU jersey next week. That's during what? what? Happen. During interviews, during meetings, you know, every, every, I'll tell you what, every time I see Michael next week, he has to have on the number five TCU jersey. Now, we're not even at halftime, and you're already telling me that he is going to be wearing the jersey. Well, the reason why I say that, I usually don't talk, but I tried to shake his hand before the game as a friendly, you know, good luck. He didn't want to shake my hand. So, yeah, I'm saying TCU, let's put it on. Now, hey, are you sure you're going to be able to find a Damian Tomlinson jersey in town? I heard they don't sell very well. Oh, uh, look, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I had a little trouble finding one, but uh, I'm pretty sure he got one in his closet yeah, waiting on me. I think so. Hey, guys. <laughs> we, 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 don't speak too early, though, LT. I hear you. There we go. <laughs> Some, let the smack talk continue, guys. We appreciate your time. Happy holidays, both of you. Thank you. And while Rob has been talking to LT and Michael Turner, things getting a little bit worse for Michael if he wants to avoid donning that number five TCU jersey because Horned Frogs are on the move. Injured player down for the Huskies. Last pass complete from Jeff Ballard, Delonte Hobbs. Get the ball inside the 15 yard line. Try to get a look at the number right now from Northern Illinois. We check on the condition of the injured player in a bit. First, let's check in with John Saunders. What's coming up at halftime, John? 
Well, Reese, I'll tell you exactly. We're going to talk about Allen Iverson. He's on his way to Denver from Philadelphia. Our experts will look at the best bowls that they want to see this year, and we'll also let you know who made the Pro Bowl. It's all coming up at halftime. Reese, back to you. Uh, we could have had uh, we could have had Rob tell LT that he's on the way to Pro Bowl, and I figure he already knows that. You think he's going? We all know how good LT is. Now, yeah, Ladanian Tomlinson had a spectacular year. Michael Turner, a fine play to help him on a fake punt earlier. You see, Larry English, number 51, is he is he giving chase there? He had to get kicked by his own player. You see English coming in and oh, actually rolled up by a TCU player from behind as English gave chase. English, ninth in the nation in sacks this year, has had a spectacular sophomore year. All Mid American Conference performer, second in the conference in sacks, and he's made his presence felt here tonight. We hope that the if the injury is not too serious, so English being helped to the sideline now. Yeah, well, let's hope because he's a great football player. But I, everybody knows how good LT is. I'm not sure people know how good Michael is. I mean, that guy really is a tremendous football player. I watched him the other day in the pro game. Great athlete. Chargers and the Chiefs kind of having the good run and the fake punt that I mentioned to convert and keep the drive alive. But Daniel had an 85-yard touchdown run in that game. Turner, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be a free agent at the end of the season. And the burner. It, it, and the burner. He's averaging over six yards a carry for the entire year. My LT gets in there and softens him up for three or four quarters. Then Michael comes and picks up the pieces. You know how that goes. But he, he's got to be a, one heck of a football player. And he already is a heck of a football player in the NFL. And he's going to get a shot at free agents this year. Second and 11. Aaron Brown getting the pitch from Jeff Ballard. Brown getting down close to the 10 yard line. We're inside a minute to go. Time is quickly becoming of the essence as we get inside a minute to go and clock still running. See how these two guys fared in college. Michael Turner and Ladanian Tomlinson. He holds 14 TCU school rushing records, does Tomlinson. Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator, was the running backs coach when Tomlinson first arrived in Fort Worth. Schultz told me that Tomlinson's success is due to some expert coaching. And when Tomlinson arrived on campus, he could he could barely walk and chew gum. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, Mike's tongue was firmly uh -huh. planted in cheek when when he was uh, giving praise to the great Horn Frog running back. And Michael Turner's been was terrific uh, at the cab for Joe Novak as well. Michael Turner could start for an awful lot of football teams. I mean, he is a great running back. But LT is just one of those rare ones. I I felt Jim Brown was a great running back. Then Gail Sayers and uh, Emmett Smith and Peyton, uh, O.J. Simpson, but now it's LT. I mean, they're just special. They don't come along very often, Mark. No, they don't. He's a he, he's a fabulous football player. We know that, and he's just broken the record for for scoring in the NFL in a single season. And he did it the hard way, the old-fashioned way. He he did it on the ground, the, the tough way. Paul Horning used to have the record, and he was also a kicker. So you know, forget about that. <laughs> you know, he also kicked as as far as running the ball, but. Ladinian Thompson, he's the best that I've seen. I blocked for some great backs, John Riggins, Joe Washington. He's the best I've seen. Well, you know, Mark, you played in the NFL. I, I did, obviously, but you know, despite all their success in the pros, they still maintain that close tie to their college. Mm -hmm. And all the bicker that goes on in the locker room on Saturday yep. when two schools are <laughs> playing. You know, that's what's great about college football. Their love of their school lasts and it's above money. Bragging rights and I was I was embarrassed quite a few times after Danny Marino graduated and left the University of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Took a long time to get back, but uh, he kept throwing him back to the early 80s. <laughs> Ballard on third down. Ballard finding Quinley Harmon, and Harmon is not going to get close to the first down. Down for a half minute to go in the first half. Bring up a fourth down and a virtually certain field goal situation for the Horned Frogs. TCU with a couple of touchdowns. They took over on the 26-yard line of Northern Illinois. And three plays later, Lante Hobbs went in from the four. Ballard on a third and nine play, scrambled and ran 10 yards for the touchdown. Horn Frogs, two touchdowns on the night. They missed their first point after touchdown. And here we are at 13-0. And Ballard watching the clock run down to three seconds left. That'll give Gary Patterson's team just enough time try to boot through a field goal and take a 16 nothing lead to the locker room 
San Diego County Credit Union poinsettia bowl. First half has been dominated, guys, by the TCU defense. Garrett Wolf, the nation's leading rusher, came in with his eyes set on all kinds of records, needed 128 yards in LT's house to pass Tomlinson and move into eighth on the all-time rushing list in NCAA history. But he has 120 to go. He's got eight yards on 10 carries so far, just been stifled by this purple-clad defense of the front. And this is the fourth-ranked rush defense in the nation. There's a reason for that. They're very well coached. Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator, has done an outstanding job of not only the talent that they have, but development along with Gary Patterson, the head coach, and making sure that the players are disciplined, they're smart, they're in their gaps, they're where they're supposed to be, and they're great tacklers. Well, they are great tacklers, but they also play a team game. They know what they're supposed to do. They complement one another. And when you think the fact, Mark, there's only two seniors on this football wow. team. Wow. Mm. Hey, you don't want to play them. But as I said, they have beaten an awful lot of good teams. I mean, they beat Oklahoma last year. Mm -hmm. they, they beat Texas Tech this year. They beat Held Baylor. Them to three yeah, points. Three points. Yeah. Mike Leach's offense. Oh, I remember how upset Mike Leach was after that game. After watching uh, TCU's defense, I said, now I know why that happened. It's amazing how well they cover in man to man coverage. Chris Manfredini will try the 25 yard field goal. It'll be the last play in all likelihood of the first half. Manfredini 11 of 13 on field goals from this distance, 3 of 4 on the season. Manfredini pops it right through the uprights. And TCU will take a 16-0 lead to halftime. Horn Frogs have won seven straight games, and in their last eight games, they've outscored the opposition 192 to 13 in the first half. Huskies will have to try to find a way to get that man Garrett Wolf going. Joe Novak has the wheels turning right now in hopes of finding some offense for Northern Illinois in the second half. Negative 22 yards rushing so far, and as Novak leads his team to the locker room, as is his custom, Gary Patterson gathered his troops around midfield. They got together, and then the Horned Frogs, too, will retreat to the locker room. Patterson has a 16-0 lead. He's with Rob Stone. Well, Coach, you just had your team circled up. What'd you tell them? Well, I just told them we got to play 60 minutes. You know, it's you know we, we gave up a long pass because we blew a coverage, and, uh, you know, anything can happen when you have a, ball, when you have a running back like Garrett Wolf playing for you. So, uh, you know, we've got to play better in the red zone. We've got down there, haven't gotten it. Should have probably had two more scores. But, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the layoff that we're playing well. And um, we need to come back and play the kind of defense we did the second half. What have you done to corral Garrett Wolf? Well, you know, you know, we played an Adrian Peterson a year ago. I mean, these guys have been against good running backs before. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to play great leverage and trying to tackle. You know, we're still having a little bit of trouble with that. But uh, we just need to keep playing the way we're supposed to. Keep your gaps and everybody surround them run the football. Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. So Gary Patterson trying to win 11 games for the third time in four years. Only two other schools, USC and Boise State, have done that. Horn Frogs up 16-0 on Northern Illinois at halftime. Now let's join John Saunders for the halftime report. Well, thanks a lot, Reese. You know, you're up 16 to nothing, right? You've pretty much shut down the other team's offense completely. And you're not satisfied. You he's, never had, he's a coach. We've got to tackle better. I'm Garrett. trying to figure out they're having problems tackling. Garrett Wolf's had 10 carries for eight yards. Nine is 22 rushing. Good. Coach yeah. Patterson, lighten up a little bit. Things <laughs> you know, Gary Patterson, he's a head coach. He, they're never happy. They're not a, never satisfied. He plays. You know what? He's got the ability to go out and recruit. He's recruiting in Texas. He's got guys that maybe A&M didn't recruit, Tech didn't recruit. They all come in with a chip on their shoulder, and they play like it. They're more physical right now. They're taking it to them. Northern Illinois really did not have a shot in that first half. No, you're right about that. TCU was in their backfield the whole first half. I mean, Garrett Wolf, he gets the ball, takes two steps, and then all you see is Horn Frog's defensive lineman in his face. If Rob Stone would go find LaDainian Tomlinson on the sideline somewhere, <laughs> even LaDainian would tell him a great running back can't do it by himself. And that's what uh, Garrett Wolf is faced with right now. You know, the one thing that happened this year, and we, everyone stopped talking about TCU, they were a team that everyone said, Maybe that's the non-BCS school that gets into a bowl game. They lose too early, and everyone just kind of writes them off. But this is a top 25 team. Gary Patterson doing a great job. It's like everyone forgot that yeah. TCU's still a good team. Yeah, they lost a couple early, 
But if you had a two-loss team in a BCS conference, we'd all be talking about how great they are. Yeah, fourth in the nation in rushing defense. The best guy that ran the ball against them this year was Rodney Ferguson in New Mexico, 71 yards, doing an even better job tonight against Garrett Wolf, the nation's leading rusher. And for Northern Illinois, their defense has played pretty good. They've got to do even more in the second half. I think the defense is either going to have to score or do something to shorten the field to give the offense a little bit of breathing room down in TCU's territory. Otherwise, it's going to be a long second I'm half. I'm just thankful for the TCU players that they're not up bigger because you know they'd be in real trouble <laughs> if they had an even bigger lead at halftime. Stick around when we come back. We'll discuss football, but we'll also talk about Kobe Bryant, our Sunday night conversation. And of course, Allen Iverson has been traded. We'll let you know where he's going when we come back. Capital One Bowl Week, December 26th through January 1st on ESPN. Look around. The changes catch your eye And you come to realize One can make a difference Since 1915, Kiwanis International has touched millions of lives. Join with your local Kiwanis Club and discover how you can help make a difference. But one can make a difference one of those amazing phones. Well, Timmy, do you mean VCast phones? The Envy plays VCast video and its full keyboard makes it great for texting. And the mint chocolate's perfect for music lovers. It's got an MP3 hey! player. You know I'm working here! Only Verizon Wireless has the gifts you want, like the hottest LG VCast phones. Now get these two fully loaded phones for just $49.99. Happy holidays from the network. MyCokeRewards.com. We are at halftime, and Northern Illinois has some splaining to do because yeah, right yeah. now they are down 16 to nothing to TCU, and they have nothing going offensively. Second half still to come, and I'll be rejoined by the four wise men in just a moment. But first of all, the big news of the day out of the NBA: Allen Iverson is leaving Philadelphia. We knew that. Now we know where he's going. He's going on to the Denver Nuggets to join Carmelo Anthony. That's going to be quite a team when Anthony comes back from his 15 game suspension. AI, of course, second leading scorer in the league this year, four times the top scorer in the league, and general manager Billy King says he will definitely be hard to be replaced. When you take 31 points on the unique player, uh, that's hard. Uh, but now we've got to go back and reevaluate and build a, a different way. And uh, I wish Allen the best of luck, and I think we're going to start working tomorrow and making this organization want to proud again as it always has been. The key to this trade is the two first round picks in 2007. Andre Miller is a great point guard, great rebounding point guard. Joe Smith in the latter years of his career right now. Iverson will join Carmelo Anthony. That's going to be extremely interesting. Here's Stephen A. Smith's take on today's trade. Win-win as far as I'm concerned. Allen Iverson paired with Carmelo Anthony. They're unstoppable. You know they've got a great coach in George Carl who's going to know how to utilize the offensive arsenal that they have in their repertoire. I think it's a win in Denver situation. I'd say it's a good shot that he's going to stay in Denver simply because he's due to be paid about $19 million next season and then $20 million a year after that. That's a lot of money to move. Maybe in the last year of his deal, if things are not working out, perhaps he'll go elsewhere. But for now, it looks like Denver will be his home for at least the next year and a half. Stephen A., thanks a lot. So Denver has the number one and number two scores in the league right now, although Carmelo Anthony is sitting out 15 games. Meanwhile, our Sunday night conversation will be with Los Angeles Lakers star Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant has come a long way since his feuding with Shaq, and right now he is definitely the leader of the Lakers. How to be a better teammate. I think that's something that I learned. Um, that I took for granted. Well, I'm, I'm more of a big brother now, um, as far as mentoring some of my teammates and, and, and being compassionate. 
having compassion for you know uh, their mistakes or you know not hitting big shots. So before, what were you doing? Oh, before, oh man, I was, you know, I'd get heated. I'd get really heated. And um, now it's just about understanding. And that just comes with age, at least for me it has anyway. That's a Sunday night conversation, which of course will be on the 24th, Christmas Eve, and then on Christmas Day. The Los Angeles Lakers and Kobe Bryant take on Dwayne Wade, the reigning MVP of the playoffs and the Miami Heat. It's a Christmas special on ABC. So we're going to visit the land of our ancestors. Ireland? No. Credit card miles expired. Think more distant relatives. <laughs> this is great! Hey, it's me, Cousin Bob! Going down. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earned caps, and no blackout dates. See, kids, first class all the way. Something smells good. Oh, no, 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 no. Married to Blige and Friends, a Circuit City exclusive CD, and in stores now, Reflections, a retrospective, featuring all of Mary's classics plus four new hits. Mary J. Blige and Friends, only at Circuit City, and the new album, Reflections, in stores now. American Pie presents The Naked Mile. Welcome to The Naked Mile. Have you been naughty? Whoa, what's that? What? Or naked. What are you guys doing still dressed? American Pie presents The Naked Mile, unrated, on DVD today. I was an offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. How proud are you? How strong are you? How imposing can you be? The best way to prove yourself is to play in a game like this. USC, Michigan. In the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game presented by City, New Year's Day. We look forward to that one. Here's some news from around the nation. Javon Sneed, the backup quarterback at Texas, is transferring to Ole Miss. He got the news, you know, Colt McCoy is a pretty good quarterback, and he's a freshman. He'll be a sophomore next year. Some other news. The starting defensive tackle, Ed Johnson, has been suspended for the outback ball by Penn State. Byron Storr has a broken arm, and he'll miss the holiday bowl for Cal. And Ike Whitaker is entering alcohol rehab for Virginia Tech, so he will not be playing as well. Some coaching moves. Stanford hiring former NFL quarterback and University of San Diego coach Jim Harbaugh. Had a bit of a surprise. The Boston College Eagles, uh, Doug, hire Packers offensive coordinator Jeff. <laughs> Jay Kaczynski, yeah, come on. No, I'm sorry. And then I know hires Washington State defensive coordinator Rob, Rob Hagee, of course, who is replacing Dennis Erickson, who was there for an entire year. You know, one of the great things about the bowl season is you get to see matchups that you don't see during the regular season, like we're seeing tonight. You hope they're more competitive than what we're seeing tonight. What is a game you're looking forward to? I, I think the fun one for me to watch is going to be the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, Boise State is... Uh, Person Oklahoma. Boise State undefeated, the only other undefeated team this year besides Ohio State. So we all had them in our national championship game, but they're not allowed in there because they only run the won the whack, you know, they're not. But we get to find out how good they are. And they're going against Oklahoma, who's had a great year. Alan Patrick stepped in for Adrian Peterson, but Adrian Peterson is back. We're gonna get a chance to see him on the field for one last time. And I'm just excited to watch and see how he does and get him back out there, and it'll be fun to watch. 
in the spirit of the holiday season, <laughs> I want to see the Holiday Bowl, Cal versus Texas. I really would like to see the matchup with the Thorpe Award winner, Aaron Ross of Texas, versus an up-and-coming superstar, Deshaun Jackson of Cal. And I'd like to see if Nate Longshore and Marshawn Lynch, the quarterback and running back of Cal, can hit a groove because that Texas defense is going to be ready for them. Now, with Javon Sneed leaving, I don't know what they're going to do in case McCoy gets hurt. I mean, the last two times I saw McCoy, he was out the game. I think the best early matchup uh, come later this week in the Las Vegas Bowl, BYU and Oregon. BYU very quietly ran off nine straight wins. There's always talk about expansion in conferences. If the Pac-10 were ever going to expand, BYU might be in there. So they have a bit of a chip on their shoulder when they're going against a Pac-10 team. And a new rule this year in, in the Las Vegas Bowl, Todd, they're allowing each team to bet their $950,000 on red. Just one. <laughs> <them. laughs> well, the game that I'm most intrigued to watch is the Sugar Bowl down in New Orleans. LSU and Notre Dame, I think both teams have a lot to prove, a chance to make a huge statement. LSU lost two very tough games on the road at Florida, at Auburn. They have a chance to prove that they're as good as anybody in the country, which I think talent-wise they can stack up with anybody. Notre Dame, they have a chance to prove that they are good enough to play with the big boys. The two best teams they played this year, Michigan and USC, they did not play very well. They played very well in beating teams like Army, Air Force, and Navy, and Penn State earlier in the year. <laughs> but this is a chance to go against a high-quality opponent in LSU and make a big statement. Of course, we're all looking forward to Florida, Ohio State. Oh, yeah. We should make that noise. And of Give course, me a pick the, on the role Bowl as well. Give us a pick on the championship. Oh, definitely. Game. I'm going with Ohio State all the way, no doubt about it. They've, been, they've shown it since day one this year. They come out in big games. Troy Smith plays great in big games. No, Troy Smith is the X factor. You can, you got Gonzalez, you got Tony, Ted Ginn Jr., you have Pittman and Wells, but without Troy Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner, that team is not, is not a good team. So Troy Smith is the X factor. The only concern I would have for Ohio State is 51 days off, but unfortunately that gives Jim Trestle a little longer to prepare. The best big game coach in America is Jim Tressel. He is a great coach. I think Urban Meyer has done a great job at Florida. I'm going with Florida in this game. I think the one thing that layoff does affect more than anything is special teams, and I think Florida may have an edge in special teams in this game, even though that's always been a strong point for Jim Tressel. On one night in Arizona, I'm going with Florida. <laughs> SEC. Not one, 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 the, the only right. guy that lives it. in Ohio. Big <laughs> 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 can't stand the Ohio home. State Buckeyes. Family no <laughs> going home for Todd Blackledge. All right, stick around. We still have the second half to come up in this one and Lante Hobbs runs a tough four yards here and TCU is rolling. Six days left. Kmart and ESPN Classic celebrate last minute endings. November 23rd, 1984. Trailing Miami 45-41, Boston College quarterback Doug Flutie launches a last-second desperation pass. Palin is down there. Oh, he got it! He got it! He got it! Get great last-minute gifts at Kmart. Open until 10 p.m. and later all week, including Christmas Eve. Is that you? Yeah. Last time we saw you, you were a size small. Goodness. Find every size of men's sweaters and flannel shirts on sale. Kmart, where Christmas comes together. Find the perfect gift. Right now with Zales Diamond Bracelets. Save $300 on these one carats, now just $4.99. Find the perfect gift. Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. has a new address. A place where bad things don't just happen at night. The best horror, the most deranged killers, all just waiting for you. To get there, go to FearNet on your on-demand menu. Come on, what are you afraid of?
Capital One Bowl Week doesn't start until next week, but the rest of this week still has plenty of bowl action. All of these games will be seen on ESPN or ESPN2 in high definition. The Pro Bowlers were announced today, and in a big surprise to everyone, a guy we just heard from earlier, Ladanian Tomlinson, somehow made it to the Pro Bowl. <laughs> is I don't know, fourth, just slipped under the radar there. He's broken every rushing record there is in the history of the National Football League this year. It seems that way. Philip Rivers of the Chargers comes in for Drew Brees and gets his way to the Pro Bowl. Peyton Manning, no surprise there. And LG, of course, the second best running back in the National Football League, perhaps. Brian Erlacher. In the NFC, no surprise there. He was almost almost a unanimous choice going on to his sixth Pro Bowl. The surprise players there, Tony Romo, a guy who wasn't even on the radar at the start of this football season, going to the Pro Bowl. Drew Brees leaving the San Diego Chargers, going to the Saints. He's probably the runner-up for the MVP. And Tiki Barber, probably it's his final game, at least if he go by what he had said early on. Seven Bears were also selected. Stick around. The second half is still to come. Tommy Blake with a big sack as TCU has control of Northern Illinois. I don't even have that insurance. What insurance, Santa? The one that pays you cash if you're hurt and can't work. Huh? Aflac. Ask about it at work. Can you just sit down the toys? When you've got a burning, scratchy, sore throat, nothing feels good. But a few blasts can change everything. Introducing VIX 44 Sore Throat. Fast sore throat pain relief with cooling VIX vapors. New VIX 44 Sore Throat. Tell your throat to just chill. And for cough relief, try VIX 44 Cough. means nothing if not a spectacular halftime show. We're seeing that one with a holiday theme at the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Plenty of fireworks, most of which in the first half were provided by the TCU defense. Let's go down to the field now. Rob Stone standing by. Rob? Well, Coach Novak, how do you get your offense back into this game? Well, we got to block them. They're awful fast on defense. We got to sustain some blocks and give Garrett a chance. Right before the end of the first half, Larry English went down with the right knee. He is out for the remainder of the game. How do you guys adjust defensively? Well, he's a big pass rusher for us. We're just going to have to play as well as we can, but he's a big part of our defensive football team. Coach, we appreciate your time. All right, Stoner and Joe Novak's team really hasn't been able to muster anything offensively here at Qualcomm Stadium. Only 42 yards. Reese Davis, Mark May, Lou Holtz will join us shortly for the second half. And made a only 42 yards of offense in the first half from Northern Illinois. They seem to be overwhelmed athletically. What what can they do in the second half to get something going on that side of the ball? They've got to find a way to run the football. They've got to get Garrett Wolf loose behind the line of scrimmage. They've got to do a better job of blocking at the point of attack. Now, it's key to get Garrett Wolf to the second level because that's where he does his most damage on defenses. But the offensive line, it's all up to them. But it's that swarming defense of TCU penetrating the entire game upfield penetration when you've got penetration in the offensive backfield it's very difficult to run the football they swarm to the football get in the backfield and your running back Garrett Wolf does not have a chance here he's trying to make the cut but look it it's not just one it's two it's three it's four and the quarterback has no chance when the pocket collapses on him Tommy Blake Chase Ortiz getting up the field pressuring the quarterback 
This is what TCU is about. Their entire football team is based on Gary Patterson's defense. You stop the run, you get to the quarterback, that's how we win football games. Fourth best in the nation in rush defense, and tonight against the nation's number one rusher, They've held Northern Illinois to minus 22 yards. Garrett Wolf came in with 1,900 yards on the season. He had eight in the first half. And frankly, as good a prospect as Doug Free, the left tackle from Northern Illinois, might be, he's going to have nightmares about that guy, number 97, Tommy Blake. Well, first and foremost, Tommy Blake is the best defensive football player on the field. You don't leave Doug Free, no matter how good you think he is, one-on-one -on -one in critical situation. Slide that guard to him. Have a tight end over there. Help him out a little bit. Make sure you protect the quarterback quarterback first and foremost. That was the plan coming into the game. They wanted to try free by himself against Tommy Blake. They even told Doug leading into the game, the coaching staff did, hey, Doug, this is a chance to make a few more bucks. <laughs> and maybe, maybe not so much in the first half. Well, I'm glad they tried that, but that experiment did not work. Now it's time <laughs> to go to plan B. Doug Free's one heck of a football player. He will play at the next level, but in this situation, help him out. Play smart. Doug Free is noted for his tremendous feet and athleticism, but Tommy Blake in the first half has been at a different level, although there have been times when Free held his own. TCU deferred their choice in the first half. They were seeing in the second half. Kickoff drives Aaron Brown back into the end zone. He let it sail over his head. The Horned Frogs will take over at their own 20-yard line. The residue from a spectacular halftime fireworks show Still hanging in the air here at Qualcomm Stadium. 16-0 TCU over Northern Illinois. Just a few seconds to go. Maybe this will help out Northern Illinois. Garrett Wolf's five foot seven. He can hide behind some of those big linemen out there in the fog. Oh, the smoke. Oh, I hear about his air pollution out here. You just you can't see anything. TCU is opening play of the second half. Jeff Ballard showing option. Aaron Brown showing that he's got some running room. And on the first play of the second half from scrimmage, Brown picks up a first down. And TCU had 11 first downs to just one for Northern Illinois in the first half. Picks up their 12th first down of the game. Brown running with the option. And TCU will show you options somewhere in the neighborhood of eight times to a dozen times per game. Brown has 46 yards on the night. But what it does do, it, it just causes the defense to play vanilla and always have to worry about it. They are close to breaking a big game on it. Ballard again, yet another formation. The handoff this time is to Donald Massey. Massey, the wide receiver on an end around, knocked down by Mark Ryder. That's a nice open field tackle by Mark Ryder, and he wasn't fake at all on the play. And for Northern Illinois, they have to make something happen. And if they're going to establish themselves in the second half, they've got to get TCU off the field, and they've got to put points on the board early in this game to get some momentum going. Their defense played pretty well yes, in the did. first half. As a matter of fact, other than the option, I don't know that if TCU gained 40 yards on the ground. On the ground, very balanced again. 23 rushes in the first half, 20 passes, completed 11 of them. And Ballard to Shea Reagan. Reagan, well, if Reagan caught it, it's a first down because it's good boy is. Reagan now with his 14th catch on the season, second tonight. Every one of them gone for a first down. He's money. Get him the football. Whenever it's second, long, or third, mid range, get him the football. Nice protection up front. And look at the back. Lante Hobbs, nice pass protection, protecting the quarterback. But Shea Reagan just has a knack of picking up first downs and moving the chains. Sort of a variety of Reaganomics that works even today. <laughs> no matter what your political leaning. Need a first down, throw it to 86. They have three talented tight ends. And sophomore is listed third on the depth chart. Might be the best of the bunch. Fake Delonte Hobbs. Ballard avoids one rusher. That was Ken West putting on pressure. And he finds another tight end, Chad Andrus. Andrus making the catch for another TCU first down into Northern Illinois territory at the 42-yard line. And coach, this is what a nifty quarterback can do. If you've got nice feet, you can make the, the first defender miss and make a play. This is what Jeff Ballard does on the well, th This is just a tremendous play by him. But that's why you want a quarterback that can make plays. He can make plays with his feet, Mark. He can make it with his arm. He can make it with his head, and he makes them with his heart. He's a great leader, got great, great vision and great control. TCU, five wide receivers spread all over the field. Ballard with another solid night. 13 out of 22. Standing in the pocket, throwing the fade for Harmon. Quickly, Harmon making the nice adjustment on the ball, and he has it down close to the 15-yard line. First down in the 
red zone for TCU. Uh, you talk about fighting over a defender to get the ball. This is Quinn Lee Harmon right here, hungry for the football, going over the defender right here, coming back and adjusting to the football. That is a very, very special play by a very special player. That's his third reception on the night. But I mean, fighting for the football. You have to do that. 28 yard reception, third catch of the night for Harmon sets up TCU deep in Northern Illinois territory. One back set this time. Ballard leads it with Hobbs. Delonte Hobbs driving toward the end zone, looking for a second touchdown. Did the football come loose? Football came loose, but TCU no, was able to jump on it. I think he ruled he was down. Uh, Saw the official pointing in TCU's direction. In the red zone. In the red zone, they're averaging 86 percent score. And here is just a nice play. But see, the quarterback threatening the run holds that backside in. Then a tremendous run to get in there. Let's watch Hobbs again. He also loses his hat. Well, Hobbs earlier. Oh, it came. That one came yeah. loose. <laughs> it came loose, but quickly. Quinley Harmon, who made the big reception earlier, used his hands with the ball on the ground, able to pull it out of there and avert disaster for TCU. When TCU wins the turnover battle, they're 16 and 0 in the last two years. When they lose it, they are three and three. They've not had a turnover tonight, although they did gain one on an interception in the first half by Tory Stewart. There's official review of this play. Perhaps to see if his knee's not down, the ball's out. Ball is out, but it appeared that Harmon, Harmon and maybe Schluter, Blake Schluter, the center also in there, but it appeared Harmon was the one that was able to get on the football. You see 18 in purple trailing the play there. And quickly, if we let it roll, it appeared Harmon jumped on it. Now, whether he was able to successfully gain possession, or having it ripped away. Yep. We'll see. And not only Recovery that. Recovery and down there. And not only that, Reese, that's hustle by your offensive line, wide receivers, getting down the field, helping your running back with blocks. And look what happens. The hustle downfield produces a turn, the turnovers down there. They're Johnny on the spot and recover the fumble. That's that, nothing but hustle by your teammates. And how about some good hustle by our camera crew providing this Big 12 replay crew with a great look at the fumble and the apparent recovery, Quinley Harmon. They're looking to see if it was a fumble, trying to ascertain exactly where the ball should be marked down. It, it appears from our vantage point we're watching here that it was a fumble, and, and even, even so, it appears TCU has it, has it recovered. Yes, it, it, it's clear. The possession shouldn't be in dispute. Which, which means that it will be. <laughs> Here we go. No, no, it will not be in dispute. It will be TCU's ball on the six-inch line. Here's Greg Burke. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down and goal from the one for TCU. So Greg Burks used the halftime to get the microphone ready to roll. New battery. Confirmed. And and just like made a likes it, the officials on the field making a decisive call. Use the guys upstairs. Just make sure they got it right. And in this case, they did. Make the call and go with it. <laughs> you know how I feel. Are, are you trying to get rid of the replay system? No, if, if it's that close and if, if you're not confident in what you're doing, then you ask for the replay. But make the call. TCU trying to spread out the Northern Illinois defense and give Ballard a little running room. And he got it up. And Ballard is in for the second time tonight. Touchdown, TCU. Ballard, who had over 400 yards rushing on the season, runs it in for the second time tonight, and the Horned Frogs take the opening drive of the second half and march down for the touchdown. And a wonderful job of the offensive line. Look at the push that they get. Big old tackle, Wayne Sisk right there, knocking the defender in the backfield. Jeff Ballard taking it in for the score. This is a very, very well-executed drive by this offense. Uh, very, very well-executed. But the option presents so many problems. Whenever they get in trouble, that's where they go to. The extra point is up and good. Ballard's led his team on a couple of touchdown drives. The offensive line assuming control on that drive. And the Horned Frogs going for their third 11-win season in the last four years are up 23-0 on Northern Illinois.
Mary J. Blige and Friends, a Circuit City exclusive CD, and in stores now, Reflections, a retrospective, featuring all of Mary's classics plus four new hits. Mary J. Blige and Friends, only at Circuit City, and the new album, Reflections, in stores now. Tools are what you do. Gifts are what she does. Get where we're going here? Check out the Craftsman Quiet Glide Storage Combo. Drawers open smooth and easy. If you want it, ask for it. Craftsman at Sears. It's that magical time of year. Get a special lease offer on a C230 sports sedan with a powerful 2.5 liter V6 at the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event, now through January 2nd. There's never been a better time to get that Mercedes-Benz on your wish list. have gone pro in something other than sports. Jeff Bauer just scored his second touchdown of the night for TCU, and the Horned Frogs are up 23-0. Bauer, Bauer appears to be having a snack on the sidelines. Horned Frogs in control. A little energy boost. Oh, maybe needed a little bit. Every now and then, perhaps a perhaps a power bar. I doubt I doubt they're hot dogs or anything <laughs> down there like uh, like Coach Holtz is expert in securing up here in the booth. <laughs> Gotta have friends. <laughs> <laughs> the kickoff driving Marcus Perez back and Perez muffs it. Doesn't want to run backwards and Perez is gonna be knocked down at the two-yard line. Number four, Stephen Coleman. Coleman down there to make a tackle and tackle and boy, not what Joe Novak needed. The muff on the kickoff and then Coleman making the play on Perez and an offense that has struggled all night. It's been pretty good in special teams though to keep the minute at times. Now about 98 and a half yards away from a touchdown that they desperately need to get back in the game. Perez frustrated trying to make the play. Unable to do so, and his offense is in a hole again. Nicholson throwing out of his own end zone, not even close, looking for Britt Davis. Our K Jewelers storyline goes a little something like this. The nation's leading rusher has been stifled by the TCU defense. Garrett Wolf came in 1,900 yards on the season. He's got eight yards on 10 carries. Jeff Ballard, the TCU quarterback, fine night running and throwing the football in the Horn Frog defense. Allowed just 42 yards, most of that coming on a 62-yard pass play, which tells you that there have been plenty of negative plays as well. Yeah, that's a loss in the first half, nine by TCU, as Wolf tries the middle of the Horn Frog defense. Doesn't get much, and he brings up a third down and long. And a lot of the success on the defense is because of Blake, Williams, Vess, Ortiz, the defensive front four of TCU, controlling the line of scrimmage, shutting the run down, and getting pressure on the quarterback, Dan Nicholson. Cody Moore into the game off the bench as well. Ortiz, first team all Mountain West performer, as is Tommy Blake on the other end. Pressure from the backside against Nicholson. Nicholson completed his pass to Brandon Davis, but right there immediately to make the stop is Brian Bonner. Bonner's had a fine game, not only returning punts, playing well on defense. In the entire secondary, all the players are great tacklers. They get to the ball, they wrap up, they bring you down. They don't let you get the extra yardage. And I think that's a compliment to that your head coach and your defensive coordinator, Dick Bumpus, that these players are extremely well coached. Danger time right now for Northern Illinois. Already in a world of trouble down 23 0. But now Andy Dick Benner is punting out of his own end zone. The dangerous Bonner back to return. The low line drive punt, and Bonner will have an opportunity. Bonner slips one tackle. Brian Bonner's inside the 30. Bonner. 
struggling and getting inside the 20 and the horn plug. This is the way they started the game. The first possession for Northern Illinois resulted in a return by Bonner to the 26 yard line. This time he takes it inside the 20. Short field for the Horn Frogs and an opportunity to blow this thing wide open. And coach, you've got to love the way that Brian Byron takes the ball and goes north and south. He doesn't go sideways, he goes down the field and he knocks a couple of the coverage guys down on the ground with a spin. Well, he gets some good blocking, but you know, Mark, anytime you find a good punt returner, he's got to be able to beat the first First or second tackler on his own to set the rest up and up and that he certainly does well. Bonner was first team all conference as a punt returner. Also had 47 tackles, couple interceptions this year. Do it all player, former high school quarterback. Yet another of the guys converted to a different position by Gary Patterson and the reverse. Finds a little wide open running room for Donald Massey. And Massey gets inside the 10 yard line. The Horn Frogs are threatening again. Speed, 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 speed. Well, this should have scored. I mean, it's a great reverse. You're going to see three blockers oh. out here and one defender. And lo and behold, he makes the play. A touchdown saving tackle, at least temporarily. Now it was a delayed Illinois. touchdown. Yeah. Aaron Brown trying to get down close to the five yard line on first and goal. Brown will be knocked down by number 26, Corey Hansen. TCU has difficulty running the football right at. Northern Second Illinois. Ball. They play very well on defense. They do have trouble stopping the option and the play action pass. A couple of senior defensive linemen in there for the Huskies, and their best one, although injured now, Larry English is just a sophomore. They have some talent on the defensive line. Ballard going to the corner. That looks very much like Ballard's first touchdown run, and instead it will be his third touchdown of the night. And TCU is opening up a can on Northern Illinois. It's 29 to nothing. And this is just a fabulous job by quarterback Jeff Ballard. Circling the defense, there's no contain out there. Watch, the fake to the back runs to the outside. It's an open boot. It's not there, but he's got the feet and the quickness and the savvy to get the ball into the end zone for the score. He will be 19-2 and two as a starter. That's over 90% victories in the games he started in college. And as a testament to his athleticism, for the second time tonight, he scores a touchdown, slipping a tackle from Tim McCarthy, normally a short tackle in the middle linebacker spot. Peter Lococo knocks through the extra point, 30 to nothing. TCU is rolling toward its 11th win of the season. So how good are these Horned Frogs? How high a level could they compete at? We'll talk about that when we come back. Look around, the changes catch your eye. And you come to realize one can make a difference. You never know what a child may accomplish if given a chance. Join with your local Kiwanis Club and discover how you can help make a difference. But one can make a difference. Oh. See all the wonderful toys at the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event, now through January 2nd, with a special lease offer on the ML350, an insurance institute for highway safety's top safety pick. There's never been a better time to get that Mercedes-Benz on your wish list. Samuel Adams, we have 18 award-winning beers. We can't wait to make the next one. Every year, we bring out a new style of Sam Adams. And you can try the winning style in our Brewmaster six-pack. Yeah. We want to make the best of that style that an American beer drinker can get. 
The best in German engineering, Braun 360 Complete, the world's first electric shaver with the expertise of Gillette Blade technology. For Braun's closest, most comfortable shave ever, it even cleans and renews itself. Braun, precision, control, perfection. It's been a tried and true formula for the Horned Frogs tonight. And a great punt return from Brian Bonner let Jeff Ballard score a touchdown. Third rushing touchdown of the night. Caps a 19-yard 19, 19 drive, I should say, after an earlier Bonner punt return. In fact, first drive of the night for TCU was also a three-play drive. That went 26 yards. The Horned Frogs, the big lead at 30 to nothing. Here is Britt Davis on the return from Northern Illinois. Davis gets out to the 25-yard line, and he is stopped once again by Henson. Robert Henson is a special team standout, customarily the first man down on the kickoff team. And Joe Novak squad is just being overwhelmed by the speed and athleticism of TCU. And Northern Illinois offense, which, which has acquitted itself well against big name opponents over the past couple of years, is and, and granted the Ohio State game the Buckeyes got a big lead before Northern Illinois really started moving the ball in the early part of the season the matchup this year but tonight one play they've had one pass play to assignment and that's been it and that was on a missed coverage assignment this TCU defense I think returned nine starters you, you know what will be interesting next year they play Texas Mark and in the final poll Mac Brown the coach of Texas did not rank TCU in the top 25. Ooh. That will, you think, you think he will after this game. Notice? <laughs> hey, look, Gary Patterson is a guy who never misses an opportunity to find a way to motivate his team. There was an ice storm before the final game of the season in the Metroplex area around the Fort Worth area. and. Patterson told his team if they would give 100% he would after practice so he took a run at the end of practice and took a dive into some icy water <laughs> to show his team want to get them all fired up and ready to go we're here in San Diego for the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl and our bowl road trip will take us to Las Vegas next Thursday night 730 Eastern time another team that perhaps has been a little bit overlooked this season BYU John Beck terrific quarterback a high Power Cougar offense, champions of the Mountain West, ought to be a shootout in Las Vegas. Only high rollers in Vegas for this one against the Ducks of Oregon. And this is the same BYU team that beat this TCU team decisively 31 to 17, Mark. Bronco Mendenhall, their head coach, has done an outstanding job with that football team and bringing BYU back to national prominence and getting the bowl games. And he should have gotten some votes for coach of the year. He's done a great job there. Perfect. An interesting that coach he replaced at BYU is now the offensive coordinator at the University of Oregon. Gary Croton, now on Mike Bellotti's staff. Gary Patterson's team had aspirations to be in the slot that Boise State is in, a team that was able to qualify for a spot in a BCS game when the season started. They beat Baylor. He was expected to have a good season and actually was playing well until the quarterback Sean Bell got hurt. Talked about him taking apart Texas Tech. And then BYU ended the unbeaten dream for TCU. Also lost to Utah in the following game. Garrett Wolf getting up close to the 30 yard line. It's been a frustrating night for the senior from the west side of Chicago, Garrett Wolf, who just with that carry should be in to double figures rushing for the night. 12 carries, 14 yards. This is from a guy who had 353 yards rushing. But I think I can safely say that I've seen Ball State and TCU's defense is no Ball State. No. <laughs> Second and five now. Wolf trying to avoid the swarm of tacklers and can't not do it. Marvin White, all-conference performer, senior of Port Bar, Louisiana, making the stop on Wolf. Yet another third down situation for the Huskies. Gary Patterson, the head coach of TCU, challenged this team, brought out the newspaper and said, look, Garrett Wolf's on the cover of the newspaper, the sports page. They don't like us. They disrespect us. And it's every little ploy that he gets to motivate his team. But his team has really excelled tonight defensively. I'm really impressed the way that they get to the ball and they shut the run down. One of four teams this season not to allow a 100-yard rusher, and Wolf is going to have to break along when it would appear if he's going to do that tonight. Nicholson throwing for Simon. Those two hooked up for the only big play of the night, and perhaps it's going to be another positive play 
Raphael Priest appears that he is going to be called for pass interference and keep the Husky drive alive if that is in fact the call that this Big 12 crew makes. In talking to Dick Bumpus he just feels so confident in their corners that they can play anybody's receivers man to man. Pass interference number 10 of the defense 15 yard penalty automatic first down. Boy, I tell you, those TCU fans, they're really, <laughs> really greedy, aren't they? <laughs> a lot of purple in the hotel, a lot of purple hanging around the marina in San Diego. Proud of this Horned Frog team. Priest led the team with nine passes broken up this year. Simon had a step on him. Might have had his right arm in there. Tough to see from that vantage point how much contact there was. The second first down of the game from Northern Illinois. This one coming by penalty is unclear whether it was a mercy penalty. Blake almost jumps offside, but gets back to his defensive end position. Wolf is going to get the call, and Garrett Wolf getting one yard, and that's it. Jason Phillips making the stop for TCU. Looking at the big picture, what this bowl means to programs like a TCU, with all the players they have coming back defensively, the nine defensive starters returning next year, this is a springboard into next season. You can use this in recruiting. You can use this in spring ball. You go, you have a better, quicker step in the offseason. You feel much better about yourself because your last game, last time you took the field, you won and you played well. See that stat on Patterson? His fourth 10 win season, the last five. And that's going to be his third 11 win season, his last four, as Nicholson goes down again. Pressure coming from everywhere. Defensive back Eric Buchanan coming on the safety blitz. The bump has told us this week they've got guys that can run. They like to blitz. They like to turn them loose, well, and it's paying off. When they can play man to man as well as they do, where there's nobody open, you're going to get pressure. And I want to say this: Why Gary Patterson hadn't had an awful lot of attention from different schools makes you wonder. But I can promise you, when people watch this game, they're going to flat put him on the list. Teams playing with a high level of energy, been dominant in this game. Going to win 11 for the third time in the last four years. Only USC and Boise State can say that right now. Nicholson firing it for Britt Davis deep down the side. Flag is going to come. It's going to be another pass interference penalty as Nick Sanders got a hand on Davis, gave him a little shove too soon. Davis was breaking free, so. They, Northern Illinois has found an offensive tactic that will work. Get in third and long, throw it as far as you can, and wait on the Horn Frogs to commit pass interference. <laughs> well, when when they play your man coverage as tight as they do, you got a better chance to complete a 40 yard. Number 20, the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. You got as good a chance to complete a 40 yard pass. You do a four yard pass. And this is clearly pass interference, but on third and long, what's happened for Northern Illinois, they're getting some type of pass protection, and that helps out your quarterback, Dan Nicholson, where he can step up in the pocket and throw the ball 30, 40 yards down the field. Three first downs on the night for the Huskies. Only one of them by virtue of an offensive play, something other than a penalty. That coming on the 62-yard pass to Simon in the first half. Northern Illinois will keep the drive alive. Dan Nicholson. Quarterback for the Huskies. A sophomore from Chicago's South Side. Tough guy, leader. A little toughness tested by the Horn Frog defense tonight. Inside six minutes to go in the third quarter. Garrett Wolf getting the call, and Wolf knocking the linebacker backwards. Robert Henson there to make the stop. It appeared that Wolf had the better leverage on the collision, but still a short game for the Husky superstar running back. Running with a little determination, but I like the way that they're running downhill now. Look at him right there, just taking it to the defender. And, and that's what I thought. They didn't have the speed to encompass this defense, but I thought that they could run downhill at them and have some success. You know, one of the things that John Bond told us leading up to this game was that he had started a few games because they'd seen so many different looks for defense designed to stop Wolf, but Wolf has the ball again and he stopped short of the first down. 
He, he referred to them as UFO defenses, things that teams had never shown before. He'd started a couple of games. He'd started a couple of games in his two-minute package just to try to get some people off of Garrett Wolf. But as Lou's mentioned a few times tonight, TCU really hasn't had to resort to much trickery. They're playing him with the six-man front as the way they felt that they would play him because uh, that's how they've been successful all year. They don't need a seven-eight-man front to stop anybody's running game. Third down now. Nicholson, short drop, firing it out to the side. Sanders, who was flagged for pass interference on the last third down, had pretty good coverage on Britt Davis this time. And now we have another flag flying late. Perhaps I hope I didn't speak too soon on Sanders' behalf. Greg Burks, referee, we'll talk it over with his linesman, David Alexander. Let's see what the call is going to be. Dead ball, personal foul, number 83 of the defense. 83 is ejected. So Jared Redkovsky kicked out of the game for a personal foul. Redkovsky, who not only plays on the defensive line, but is also the snapper for the Horned Frogs, losing his composure and getting kicked out of the game. Apparently, Redkovsky, as we look at the replay, guys, it looks as if Redkovsky might have thrown an elbow. After the play's over, watch 83 here. Exchanging words and swinging the elbow at Chris Acevedo. And this was caught. So another first down by penalty, and Nicholson fires the ball high into the air. Henson was giving chase, but Nicholson able to get the ball out of bounds. Cody Moore, backup defensive tackle and one of the strongest Horned Frogs. Second time tonight applying pressure to Nicholson. You see the frustrated Redkovsky. Got to give it to quarterback Dan Nicholson. This is a pretty heady play. He knows he's going down. So what does he do? He's just going to throw the ball as far as he can, trying to get it to the sidelines, and he just barely makes it. David Hawthorne also in there applying pressure. Redkovsky retreats to the locker room. Redkovsky is a senior. Probably fortunate. I imagine Coach Patterson might have a word or two for the elbow being thrown. And keep him out of winter conditioning since the eligibility apparently going to end after this game. Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf, perhaps with his best run of the night, getting down close to the 20 yard line. Wolf running over on that left side behind Doug Free, the star left tackle. On this play, Doug Free does a nice job on this play, but it's Garrett Wolf that splits three defenders and then carries another two for some positive yardage. But what's really going to hurt TCU is Rutkowski uh, going out is his deep snapping ability. He's the only one that's listed as a snapper. They may not punt. <laughs> Had to punt a couple of times in the first half, but appears to be wearing down Northern Illinois defense. Nicholson is firing, and... Brian Bonner has had a terrific night getting his hands on it, unable to hold on for the interception, but breaks up the pass. Fourth down for Northern Illinois. And at this point, I guess a field goal, all that would do is salvage your pride to get the zero off the board. Kick the field goal. It appears Novak's going to leave his offense on the field. Kick the field goal. Don't want the good sack up there? I've been in games like this. I'd rather go home with at least say we scored than we got shut out. Did not happen to you in one of your ventures into this very stadium. No, it didn't, but I've been there. Super Bowl victory over the Denver Broncos. And we're with the skins. Dan Nicholson firing. Dan Nicholson got his man, Jared Carter. Carter is going to be very close He's to the first down. Short. He's going to be short. That would pretty much be Northern Illinois' night in a nutshell. If he comes up short, they finally complete a pass. You don't get enough to convert the first down. So, Coach, what's your philosophy in this situation? Do you get the point so at least you can go home and say you weren't shut out? Or do yeah. you go for the first down and the touchdown? Now, the time to worry before you place your bet, not after they spin the wheel. Don't get in that situation. Come up with a game plan whereby you feel you can move the football. But if you're there, I think you have to. <laughs> you have to snap the ball. <laughs> <laughs> How to be definitive. Wow, I'll tell you hey, what. Thank you. I was. <laughs> 
I say you kick the field goal because that's what you would have done in the normal course of the football game and uh, just go ahead and kick it. And the TCU defense holds. Carter comes up about six inches short. Frustrating night for Novak and the Huskies down 30. Come to the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event now through January 2nd and see all the exciting rides we have to offer. There's sure to be something for every wish list. Lakers, Heat, NBA Christmas Day on ABC. Kobe takes on Finals MVP Dwayne Wade in a game that's become a holiday tradition. Christmas Day, Lakers, Heat, coverage begins at 2 e Remember when wishes came true? Yes! Yes! They still can. Yes! Introducing the BMW Holiday Wish Event. The best time to buy the new 2007 X3 SAV with X-Drive all-wheel drive. Lease a BMW before January 2nd and we'll make a contribution to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. MTV2 is on the search for local VJs. This could be your chance to represent your local music, art, and social scene and finally become the star you know you are. Can you picture that? Of course you can. Represent and show us what you got, because this dog has an appetite for VJs. Who will be Chicago's next MTV2 local VJ? You can decide. Go to ComcastChicago.MTV2.com. Watch the videos and vote for your favorite today. Brought to you by Pontiac. Designed for action. ESPN2 College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union, growing together. Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. And Olivia, redefining high def. All right, so the city of San Diego, TCU, up 30 to nothing on Northern Illinois. And while the lights are on in San Diego, perhaps one of the 9,200 songs on Gary Patterson's iPod might be Turn Out the Lights, the Party's Over. If it is, Gary can put in the earbuds and play away because TCU is firmly in control of this game. Just stopping Lante Hobbs. Hobbs coming up just over the 20 yard line for the Horned Frogs. It'll bring up a second down. Mountain West Conference flew under the radar a little bit this year, guys. are going to have an opportunity now. This, you know, this is not the champion of the Mid-American Conference. Good teams and talented players from Northern Illinois. Not a much of a test, but BYU and Oregon coming up. Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl. Being able to measure up the Mountain West a little bit more, but just from the, from the eye test, it appears that TCU more than passes. Ballard hitting Quinley Harmon for the first down. And, the efficient, balanced offense with Mike Schultz and TCU continues to turn out yardage, first down, chew up clock as well. And that uh, Oregon offense under Mike Bellotti, when Jonathan Stewart is healthy, they're an entirely different football team. And if they can run the football successfully, they can score almost on anyone. But it was during the season he got nicked up a lot, but he wasn't healthy, but he had problems with his defense. So had some injuries on defense, too, that, that hurt them in the mid portion of the season. Time to heal. Oregon and BYU coming up on Thursday night. Hobbs getting the, the carry again. Hobbs, the senior out of Clarksville, Texas, in his final game. TCU has gone over the 3,000-yard rushing mark for his career in this game tonight. 37 career rushing touchdowns coming into the game. He's added one in this one for 38. Second on the Horn Frogs all-time rushing touchdown list to the great Bodanian Tomlinson. He's averaged seven yards to carry tonight. We have a second down for TCU as we wind down toward the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Four wide receivers. Ballard throwing into the seam, and Ballard very nearly put a little too much touch on that one. Threw an interception. Like Mark Ryder coming over. No, I beg your pardon, Melvin Rice coming over to make the play for Northern Illinois. Well, he tried to go to the deep receiver. I remember playing golf with a priest once, and I tried to carry the short end of the water, knocked it in the water, and he said to me, 
greed is an awful thing. Well, that's all I could think about when he tried to go to the eat. Greed's an awful thing. Take the short guy. You haven't thrown interceptions in 140 some passes. Just be patient. Third down and four. TCU will show a five wide receiver set. Ballard perhaps could be excused though, Luke, a little bit of impatience. Trying to make a big play late. He makes a good enough play, taking the short receiver and converting the third down. Another first down. I'm off at the underneath pass. But, you know, in a situation like this, I like just going to the well. Just smash mouth football. You're up at this point of the game, run the football. The countdown is on, and the number is one. Bob Knight, just one win away, tying Dean Smith top the men's all-time victory list. Texas Tech head coach is on the brink of history, 878 wins. His Texas Tech Red Raiders will take on Bucknell December 23rd to tie Dean Smith at 879 victories, more than any other coach in history of Division I basketball. Hobbs has to carry up close to midfield, but there is a flag on the play. A little committee meeting that Mayday enjoys so much. Oh, just grinding my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> There's Greg Burks now. Well, you're against all types of committees. <laughs> I've noticed. Do you notice that? He likes Takes benevolent. the momentum out of the game. Make the call. Hey, he's all for benevolent dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the one I run in the studio with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> TCU on the move. Positive run from Hobbs. Let's see what the call is from Greg Burke. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, we told you the Horn Frogs like to show a lot of formations, but that one's not within the rules. <laughs> you had to ask three other officials for that. You couldn't go make that call. I, I, maybe I'm nitpicky, but I just like the flow of the game to continue as much as possible. And Northern Illinois has not been penalized tonight. They also haven't scored. And in this case, the penalties haven't been detrimental to the Horn Frog attack. Ballard with a rather odd-looking option pitch. He couldn't get it out with his left hands. They almost used a passing motion. Northern Illinois had that one sniffed out nice. Well, very nice defensive play by the defensive end who boxed him in, forced him to pitch the ball over him. Keenan Blaylark coming in, strong side linebacker position. Bring up second. Second, I think they have to make it to the border. Second well, <laughs> well, this is a type when you get protection, though, this is not a difficult. All you need is 10, 12 yards on this play. DCU trying to make sure they have enough men on the line of scrimmage. Ballard being pressured from behind, and Ballard will be dragged down. Number 90 making the tackle there, Ed Jackson coming in. Defensive end making a play. Coming from the backside, the spot where Larry English was injured earlier in the game, and Ed Jackson chasing down the rather fleet Ballard. Ballard probably did well to protect the football there. Did very well to protect it. Be the last play of the quarter. TCU with a 30 to nothing lead and 15 minutes away from their third 11 win season in the last four. Just where does TCU rank? the better teams in the country. We'll talk about that. Look ahead to the rest of the bowl season with these guys things in store in the national championship game and also in the second game. It'll be here in San Diego coming up a little later on the Pacific Live Holiday Bowl. TCU in control as we head to the fourth quarter. Look around. The changes catch your eye and you come to realize one can be since 1915, Kiwanis International has touched millions of lives. Join with your local Kiwanis Club and discover how you can help make a difference. But one can make a difference. The Rose Bowl Game, presented by City, USC versus Michigan, New Year's Day on ABC.
Y'all ready to order? And y'all ready to check me out in the amazing picture clarity of DirecTV HD? It's broadcast in 1080i. I totally don't know what that means, but I want it. For the best in HD, get DirecTV. Right now at Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers, our entire collection of diamond rings is on sale. Like this stunning two-carat total weight diamond ring for just $9.99. For all those special times. Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers. Beginning workout. You've completed one mile. Four hundred meters to go. Three hundred meters. Two hundred meters. One hundred meters to go. Fourth quarter just about to get underway. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. It's been all TCU, 30 to nothing, number 25 team in the land on top of Northern Illinois. They've completely shut down rushing attack of Garrett Wolf, who came in leading the nation in rushing and with hopes that he would pass at least former TCU star Ladanian Tomlinson on the all-time rushing list. He needed 128 yards to do so and has not gotten close. Only 26 yards rushing, 17 carries tonight. Jeff Ballard, who scored three touchdowns on the ground for the Horned Frogs, scrambles out of trouble, but he'll be well short of first down yardage. TCU will have to punt it away. So the interesting see about TCU, they lost their long snapper. Jared Rutkowski got kicked out of the game. They don't have a backup listed on the depth chart. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can get this snap away cleanly. This is when you want to rush. Remember, they blocked a uh, a punt a little bit earlier in this football game. Here they come. And they get another one. Good call, Lou. Northern Illinois is going to get on the board. Touchdown, Huskies. That's a... That's a great job, Mark, of making the observation about this center. Thanks, Luke. Center. <laughs> Jared Carter gets the block on the punt. Northern Illinois will not go home with a goose egg. Snap a little bit off to the right, and Carter just took it right off of Courtney's foot. And taking it in for the touchdown is number 42, John Tranchatella. Tranchatella with a touchdown. Something to tell his kids about. Get a little escort from Utchik into the end zone. Now here's the interesting thing. Had you kicked the field goal when the situation called for it a minute ago, now you're, you're down to 30 to 10. Mm -hmm. Good point. Still in the ball game. Northern Illinois will try with the point after. Chris Nendick is true. And the Huskies finally have a little something to cheer about. They blocked an extra point. They get their hand for the second punt of the night. Ranchitella with the touchdown for Northern Illinois against Novak's team on the board in the fourth quarter. NBA Wednesday doubleheader on ESPN. Coverage begins at 7.30. Fearless on DVD. They humiliated their best fighters. Now one man will defy an empire. Jet Li in his final martial arts epic. Fearless. Only on Rated Edition now. Mary J. Blige and Friends, a Circuit City exclusive CD, and in stores now, Reflections, a retrospective, featuring all of Mary's classics plus four new hits. Mary J. Blige and Friends, only at Circuit City, and the new... Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. ESPN Monday Night Football, available on ESPN HD. ESPN, serving sports fans around the world. Got the HD TV set? Then get the receiver. Call 1-888-COMCAST for all your high-def action. 
Home improvement for the holidays at Menards. Give any room a new look with Nadair Lighting. This four foot four head track light set is perfect for adding more or accent light. It's simple to install, includes the track, four track heads, floating canopy, and halogen bulbs. Only $29.99. Stock up with big savings on energy efficient Sylvania fluorescent tubes. Two packs of four foot cool white tubes are on sale just $199. Plus, save 15% on anything you can fit in the bag during Menards Bag Sale. Hurry ends December 24th. Affordable. TCU at Northern Illinois, 30 to 7. The Huskies have just blocked a punt for the second time tonight, sort of spoiling the homecoming of TCU punter Brian Courtney, who's in the San Diego area. John Fentitella carrying it in for the touchdown. Though Courtney was put in a little bit of a difficult situation. His usual snapper, Jared Redkowski, was kicked out of the game, throwing an elbow earlier. Cody Moore. He's also a shot putter on the track and field team. Pressed into service as a snapper. Snapper's a little bit to the right. With Carter an opportunity to block it, give the Huskies a touchdown. Here is Aaron Brown returning the kickoff, and Brown's got blazing speed. Couldn't quite get the corner. Gets up close to the 40-yard line. Our college football bowl road trip will commence on Thursday. We're in San Diego for the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Road trip cranks up in Vegas. What happens in Vegas will be broadcast to the entire nation. Las Vegas Bowl, BYU and Oregon, the pure pioneer Las Vegas Bowl. Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Two of the top eight offenses in the country. Brigham Young has won nine straight. They are champions of the Mountain West and defeated this very good TCU team that we're watching tonight. Oregon has dropped three in a row, including a heartbreaker in the Civil War against Oregon State in their regular season finale. Jeff Ballard still in at quarterback for TCU. Senior out of Friendswood, Texas. Lante Hobbs, also a senior, getting their final three plays. Purple uniform for TCU. And these guys put together a great career. Senior class is going to turn in their third 11 win season. And that's something they can always hang their hat on for the rest of their lives, the accomplishments they've made here at TCU. And the games they've won and the bowl games they've won. And they really elevated this program since Janice Franchoni left. Gary Patterson has done a wonderful job with this program, but it's been the players that have really carried the load. This senior class over their five-year period, including those who have redshirted, and the most victories over a five-year span, more than any frog team since those of the 30s. Davey O'Brien, Sammy Ball, era. Monte Hobbs getting into Northern Illinois territory off the option play. Hobbs turning the corner and making the run. Guys, this is the first of two bowl games that will be in San Diego during this bowl season, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ABC. Pacific Live Holiday Bowl. This place is going to be filled for the Raptors, another team from Texas, the Aggies, fighting Texas Aggies. Speaking of Dennis Franchoni, will bring his team in fresh off their victory over Texas to play Cal. Well, it'll be one of the more entertaining non-BCS games of the bowl season. Here's Ballard. Getting good protection. Ballard throwing for Harmon. Harmon with a great fingertip catch. Harmon getting down close to the 10-yard line. Mark Ryder saving the touchdown, at least temporarily. And TCU is back within scoring distance once again. Mark down at the 9-yard line. Ballard laying it in there nicely. And Harmon, the leading receiver, another senior on this offense. Having a fine night, making a terrific grab. If Hasbro is one inch taller, this is an interception. You're going to see it coming right in front and just not quite tall enough. Quinley Harmon, 38 yards on that pass plays, caught six passes for 94 yards on the night. One back set behind Ballard. It's Brown. Aaron Brown getting down to the six yard line. It'll bring up second and goal. To go back and finish your thought about the holiday bowl. That should be a really exciting game, particularly Marshawn Lynch, the way that he's run the football this season. And Jeff Tedford, this is a team that they thought at the beginning of the season could possibly be a top five, top six team. They started the season off going to Tennessee, getting defeated early, but they made a pretty good run during the middle of the season. And Marshawn Lynch had an outstanding season for the Bears. All of AM's losses this year close lost in the last 30 seconds against Texas Tech lost by one against Oklahoma lost by one in the final 30 seconds against Nebraska they finished their season uptick by beating Texas again certainly you were talking about using bowl games as a springboard into next season as you see TCU stopped 
And their second down and goal play. It'll bring up a third and goal. Texas A&M is a team that could use a bowl game, game against Cal, recruited well in College Station, could be among the national elite next year. You know, they had a very weak out-of-conference schedule, but they won those games, and I think it was key was they turned the corner this year, had the big game against Texas at the end of the season, but when you've got Jaworski Lane, 300 pounds, they got him listen to 280, you know he's three bills, running the football in the backfield, love that type of offense, smash mark. If Javorski's not three bills yet, he might be after he samples to find San Diego fair. Ballard finds a wide open receiver. Another tight end. Brent Hecht. Touchdown TCU. It's 36 to 7. Very well designed play. Ballard looks off. The tight end's going to stay back on the backside, stay in the block, and then he slips out at the last second. It's been a night for the seniors. Brent Heck, the senior, with his third touchdown catch of the season. Jeff Ballard has run for three touchdowns and now has a touchdown pass. I would imagine they're going to give him some type of trophy at the end of the game. I would think so. Peter Lococo on to make it a 30-point lead for the Horned Frogs again. 37-7 over Northern Illinois. With unmatched technology and innovation years ahead of its time, we've pushed the boundaries of high definition and tested the limits of reality. The new Pure Vision Plasma Display, only from Pioneer. Your personal information is no longer personal. It starts with your name, then your social security number, then your credit card number. And with very little effort, your identity can be stolen. Life comes at you fast. That's why Nationwide offers identity theft coverage. We'll assist you in the recovery process, save you hundreds of hours, even notify you if your credit report changes. Just another way Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide is on your side. It was the night before Christmas, and Mom didn't know that Dad's right behind her with a box and a bow. This Christmas, tell her she's the greatest chapter in your life story with diamond earrings from K Jewelers, where you can be assured of two things. Every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love them. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, I'll never always remember how I feel tonight. Every kiss begins with K. With unmatched technology and innovation years ahead of its time, we've pushed the boundaries of high definition and tested the limits of reality. The new Pure Vision Plasma Display, only from Pioneer. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. Jeff Ballard accounting for four touchdowns on the night, three on the ground. He just threw a touchdown pass to his senior tight end, Brent Heck. And TCU, all smiles. The purple people are celebrating in San Diego, 37-7. About to go 11 and 2 on the season, thumping Northern Illinois here in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Wonder if we've seen the end of Jeff Ballard for tonight. Sir Ballard in his last go round as a Horned Frog quarterback, would like to stay in there as long as possible. It's Peter Lococo getting a workout and driving Britt Davis back to the goal line. Davis across the 20. Davis has a little running room. Britt Davis trying to get outside, but just too much lateral speed for TCU as they stop Davis short of the 30-yard line. Now to a man who values education, Rob Stone. Colgate University, that's my alma mater. Little plug, don't expect to check this winner. All right, let's get back to TCU, right? All right, Saturday was graduation day back in Fort Worth, but yesterday in their satellite office on the fifth floor of the team hotel, they had another graduation. Quarterback Jeff Ballard and offensive tackle Herb Taylor were in full cap and gown in the Chancellor's suite as they received their diplomas. Teammates, coaches, family there as well. Now, Lou Holtz was not available for the commencement address, so the Chancellor had the two new grads talk to the crowd. 
There is Herb Taylor, and Herb wears those shades, not, not just because his future is bright now that he has his college yeah. degree, but... Another personal foul on the Horn Frogs. If there's anything that Patterson's not going to be happy about, it would be the personal fouls. And there is Herb Taylor, the recent graduate. He has a bit of an eye condition. He can't wear contacts and has to wear those glasses to protect himself. When he first showed up wearing those shades, Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator, and Patterson, both of whom are kind of old school guys, they didn't think much of it at the beginning until Herb had to explain that he wasn't cooling out. He was just trying to, trying to protect his eyes. Set him straight, Herb. <laughs> we had the shades. So like you protect the quarterback's backside. The left tackle. You, you can wear you can wear anything you want to, can't you, Stoner? Hey, you know, we first noticed the Taylor sunglasses in his headshot in the team media guide, and, and we were, I was kind of shaking my head saying, all right, there's certainly something to this. Well, he's seen an optometrist about trying to switch to contacts, but he pops those guys in, and he has a condition that they don't really know what it is, but it waters up his eyes, makes them red, so he goes with the uh, scholarly look behind the glasses. He's got a shield in front of it, but a little heads up here. If you want to try and slow him down, he only has one pair of backup glasses with him. So you take down the specs, and you take down the back up, you reduce four eyes to two eyes, and you, my friend, are in business. <laughs> Aaron Wolf getting up close to the 50-yard line, the reflection in Herb Taylor's glasses. Not only Taylor and Ballard graduated, but back in Fort Worth, a couple other members of the football team, Robert Merrill, running back who's led the team in rushing each of the three previous seasons, also graduated along with Ken Lewis, and as I mentioned earlier in the telecast, TCU applying in hopes that Merrill, because of his injury, will be granted a sixth year of eligibility. Well, their graduation rate is 78%, which is awful high for any school, and they rate out of all bowl teams as far as graduation rates are concerned. And another line on the Gary Patterson resume. Nicholson on third down. Nicholson fires a dart. He's got a strong arm. Jared Carter making the grab. Just inside the 44-yard line. Oh, no, you've got to you've got to have somebody on the sideline prepared to do any job. Well, I say Hobbs. <laughs> hey, hey, I want to tell you this about Rob Stoder. I speak at a commencement every year, and this year I'm the Don't commencement speaker for Benedictine College, and I'm really looking forward to it. What, what's the check for that, Lou? <laughs> I do. I, I get some doctor's degree. You can call me doctor, but I d will never even take expenses to get there. <laughs> I am proud and privileged to be able to do that. I, I knew that. I was just kidding. Here's Nicholson. Nicholson wanting to throw for it all, looking for Davis again, but the closest man to it is Nick Sanders, who tried to haul it in over his shoulder and could not do it. It'll bring up second and ten. The discipline, Mark, of the TCU defense to play man coverage without a free safety 90% of the time and stay with their man stride for stride and never lose their focus and purpose. And coach, you said it before, when you've got cover corners, it allows you to do so much defensively. And defensive coordinator Dick Bumpus, it frees them up. You can blitz, you can run stunts, you can run games. When you've got some cover corners on the outside, it shuts down the wide receivers. It makes the offense one dimension. Second down and 10. Wolf is going to carry again, and Garrett has for much of the night. Fine. Mac, offensive player of the year, has found the sledding tough. Tommy Blake there to make the stop. We'll bring up third and long. Blake hitting him in the backfield, and I believe that that was TCU's 12th tackle for loss on the night. Well, you just wonder why can't you block TCU? And, and they are so quick. They'll jump left and right, jump out of your way, and you just can't get a piece of them without holding them. Maybe you should try holding. You suggested that earlier. <laughs> I did. This time Nicholson has a little bit of time. Tommy Blake breaks free from Doug Free, and Tommy Blake will chase down Dan Nicholson and sack him again. The 13th tackle for loss of the night. Second sack for Blake. The first one, a big hit on Nicholson, and this one setting the Huskies way back. It's just not giving up on a play. Look at that. Look at all the bodies in there, but Tommy Blake won't give up. He's relentless. Look at the burst right here, the closing speed to get there to get the sack. Very impressed with him, the way he's played, not just rushing the quarterback, but making tackles, getting penetration, tackles for losses. Blake's second sack on the night. Right now, it appears, though he is certainly on the radar screen and then some, scouts, uh, 
talking to the TCU coaches this week, it appears that Blake will be content to return to Fort Worth for his senior season. He has family members who are intent on him getting his degree. Speaking of the graduation rate, just as Tommy himself is. Bonner makes the catch there, TCU. But any time once it's alma mater, is rolling. What is it you want, Barry? You, you want the moon? Hmm. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Mary. Give her a gift of gold from K Jewelers. Gold makes the moment wonderful. Why don't you kiss her instead of talking at her dance? Every kiss begins with K. First time I had a Samuel Adams Boston Lager, I was like, wow, what is this stuff? Boston Lager, it was love at first taste. It's got a nice hoppiness to it. We're just literally shoving hops into our beer, and I think we're considered marginally insane. Most brewers have a dash of hops. We use a pound of hops per barrel. You know you're drinking a beer. It's not watery, you know, it's got something to it. Boston Lager tastes full-bodied. Try a Sam Adams and know that that's what beer is supposed to taste like. Don't be afraid of flavor, my man. Mary to Oblige and Friends, a Circuit City exclusive CD, and in stores now, Reflections, a retrospective, featuring all of Mary's classics plus four new hits. Mary J. Blige and Friends, only at Circuit City, and the new album, Reflections, in stores now. Crisp, finish clean. Stay cool in the heat. Gatorade Rain. I've been really good this year, and the only thing I want is one of those amazing phones. Well, Timmy, do you mean VCast phones? The Envy plays VCast video, and its full keyboard makes it great for texting. And the mint chocolate's perfect for music lovers. It's got an MP3 hey! player. You know, I'm working here! Only Verizon Wireless has the gifts you want, like the hottest LG VCast phones. Now get these two fully loaded phones for just $49.99. Happy holidays from the network. ESPN2 College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union, growing together, and Kiwanis, serving the children of the world. Back in San Diego, TCU finishing its season with an exclamation point. Just over seven minutes to go, and the Horned Frogs with a 30-point lead over Northern Illinois. Jeff Ballard, Lante Hobbs still in the game, and Hobbs breaking free. Hobbs across the 40, back down to 43, first down. This is the start of the bowl season, but our bowl road trip is going to get cranked up on the family of networks. We'll get things started. Thursday night in Las Vegas, BYU and Oregon. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Then we'll move to New Orleans for the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Rice, what a great job. Todd Graham, Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator. They've done it, Rice, to get the Owls into a bowl game, Mark, against Troy. And they have, and they fought the entire season, and they've really turned that program around in just one year. Also, Utah also on the agenda, Hawaii and Arizona State. The Sheriff in Hawaii Bowl, Arizona State, of course, replacing Dirk Cutter as the head coach with Dennis Erickson, a bit of a surprising hire. Mm -hmm. It was. Some. But if you look at his past national championships at Certainly Miami, he could recruit, bring yeah. people in. Plus, he coached at Oregon State and had success there. And here's the interesting thing. He hired Rich Olson, the offensive coordinator for Miami, to be the offensive coordinator at Arizona State. And Dirk Carter, the fire coach at Arizona State, may go to Miami as offensive coordinator. Randy Shannon, the new boss of the Hurricanes. Been total domination for the Horned Frogs tonight. 437 yards of offense. Northern Illinois with a mere 56, or roughly 100 less than Garrett Wolf has averaged rushing per game. Ballard snowed under there. Not much opportunity as Keenan Blaylark has had a fine game, makes a stop. This is the first game of the bowl season, guys, and still we're, we're roughly three weeks away from the final game. Looking ahead to Ohio State and Florida for the national championship. What impact do you think the layoff 
is going to have on the Buckeyes. And both teams laying off for a while. Ohio State's going to have about 50 days between games. I don't think it's got to be a major problem. When we spoke with Troy Smith a few weeks ago when he told us after season, he said, layoff? What layoff? We've been practicing since the last game against Michigan. Coach Trouble hasn't given us any free time off. So they're going to be razor sharp, and both teams will be healthy, and we'll see both teams at their best. Hobbs at his best is a flag on the play. Monte Hobbs, the senior, on over 3,000 career rushing yards tonight and getting a few more runs on Horn Frog backfield and Ballard's still in the game Hobbs still in the game I, I would have to imagine that is largely because they're seniors it appears that this run is going to come back now I, you know they have a fine young redshirt freshman quarterback Jackson they must not want to show him because of recruiting purposes <laughs> because there's no reason to have a senior quarterback in the game Holy this late number 18 of the offense 10 yards penalty third down there is Jackson who this game of the season against Baylor after Ballard was knocked woozy came off the bench hit 11 of 13 passes and led the Horn Frogs to victory one of two victories Gary Patterson had over Big 12 teams this year Marcus Jackson freshman out of Houston Texas and for a while you know Texas transfer quarterback Jevin Sneed who has said that he is going to Ole Miss was looking at TCU Sneed looking for a place where in better position to compete for the starting job. And Ballard's leaving this year. Transfers have to sit out a year. Sneed deciding against coming to Fort Worth and playing in this offense. Instead, casting his lot with Ed Orgeron and the Ole Miss Rebels. Orgeron's done a done a good job recruiting as he tries to rebuild the Ole Miss program or at least build it back to where David Cutcliffe had it before he took over. <laughs> He's trying. But he has done a wonderful so, job in recruiting. Sort of but, they, myself. Yeah, but, but, but they've got to turn those, those recruits into wins. Right. And he's got a lot of talent there, but they haven't raised the level yet. They need more wins there. But you have to learn how to win also, and there's nobody there to teach him how to win. Fourth and eight, and Patterson is opting to go for it. I, I can only imagine that this is because of the snapper situation with uh, Cody Moore and the snap that went off to the side. And actually, they were quick kicking and wanted to make sure that they didn't get another punt block. They've had one block tonight and one that was virtually blocked. It was deflected for a short one. So Ballard has done it all on the night, and now he's pinned Northern Illinois inside the 10 with a punt. 49 yards. TCU's up big. Y'all ready to order? And y'all ready to check me out in the amazing picture clarity of DirecTV HD? It's broadcast in 1080i. I totally don't know what that means, but I want it. For the best in HD, get DirecTV. If you want to quit smoking, today's your day. Introducing new Commit Cherry Lozenges. Quitting smoking just got a little tastier. NBA Wednesday. With Cleveland playing with confidence, LeBron and company stare down the Nets and Kid. Then, the Mavericks and Dirk take on the Sonics. NBA Wednesday on ESPN. Coverage begins at 7.30. Stephen A. Smith there. Tonight, or quite frankly, I've got the full impact of a mile-high AI, plus TV's best NFL panel of experts, and my fantasy football Super Bowl, all after the game on ESPN. Babe, babe, look. This sounds perfect. Low mileage. Loaded, must sell, best offer accepted? This one's a real classic. A real classic. Looking for the right vehicle? There's a channel for people like you. Get the whole story at Auto 889. Don't drive all over town looking for your next car. Find exactly what you want without leaving your home. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Auto 889. It's fast, it's easy, it's now. If you think you might not be able to turn one of your personal interests into a successful career, think again. You can stop watching those home improvement shows and improve yourself with the help of Triton College. Triton offers degrees in construction management, architecture, and interior design. In two years or less, you can get started on that home and a well-paying career to go with it. Registration for the spring semester is now open. Call us at 708-456-0300, extension 3130, or visit us on the web at triton.edu. Call now. This telecast is available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. High definition for the TCU defense tonight. Offense hasn't been bad either. For a Jeff Ballard quick kick, Northern Illinois has been several times tonight, pinned deep in its own end. Nicholson has been taken out of the game quarterback 
Ryan Morris in there now. Tommy Blake has been a star for TCU tonight. Let's get to know him a little bit. My name is Tommy Blake. My number is 97. I'm from Aransas Pass, Texas. I play defensive end. My favorite NFL player is Michael Vick. The, the food I will eat during the holidays is definitely pecan pie. When, I, when you say NFL for Tommy Blake, yeah, I say finish school first. And one more year, and Horn Frog faithful, glad to hear that Tommy Blake is leaning toward returning to Fort Worth. Garrett Wolf has been taken out of the game as well. Justin Anderson, 215 pound freshman, getting the carry. Blake, three tackles, two sacks tonight. One on one matchup with Doug Freeze. Not that he totally ran wild over the fine left tackle of the Huskies, but gave him plenty of trouble and had several impact plays to make it appear as if uh, awesome as if free well free did have his hands full it made it appear that he was very dumb and, and it's not only that it's the quarterback pressures it's redirecting the running back with penetration in the backfield and he's a complete player the man can play football Blake in the TCU defense marking made for a frustrating ending to Garrett Wolf's spectacular career Wolf 20 carries 28 yards on the night just enough to set a new single season record from the Mid-American Conference. He needed 16 yards to do that coming into the night. There's been questions about how good he's going to be in the NFL, whether he will get a chance. I know tonight wasn't, wasn't his best effort. His line appeared to be overmatched. What do you make of his professional prospect? Well, I think he'll definitely get drafted because he's a highly productive player. And I think the scouts that come in and say, well, he's too short, we're not going to look at him, they do themselves and their teams an injustice not paying attention to what he can do on the football field. Brian Bonner had three fine punt returns tonight, trying to make it four. Bonner staying on his feet. Bonner inside the 35-yard line. TCU is in business once again. Now, Joe Novak told us that a lot of scouts have said, no way. Not looking at him. Too short, too small, can't play in the league. The other half, they do exactly what you say. And Garrett Wolf is going to come up 11 yards short of making the top 10 all-time in rushing behind the great Archie Griffin, the two-time the two Heisman Trophy winner. But the sharp general managers and the scouts will go back and say, this is a guy that can play in this league. He's not going to be an every-down player. He could be a third-down player, a slot player, a special teams player. But he's a productive football player. Yes, he's vertically challenged. He's five foot seven. But there's been guys, Barry Sanders, five foot eight, Joe Washington, five foot eight, guys that have been very productive in the NFL that are still under five foot ten. But they aren't 175 pounds. And when you look at what Michael Turner has done in the NFL, and he broke all Michael Turner's records. As far as height, his feet do touch the ground. I think he's big enough. But one thing's for sure, he won't get as much running room as he had this year. Garrett Wolf has been a spectacular player, one that's left us with plenty of memories. Hi, I'm Garrett Wolf, running back from Northern Illinois. Hometown Chicago, Illinois. And when people tell me I'm too small, I tell them, look at the numbers. A guy that I really look up to and the way that he handles himself and what he does for himself and others is Warwick Dunn. You know, a lot of people probably try to tell him that, you know, he can't do this and he can't do that because he's small, but, you know, he's living proof that anything can be accomplished on a football field regardless of size. I raise some people's doubts about me. I'm a football player and, uh, you know, everything looks good on paper, but, you know, bottom line is I play good between the lines. Joe Novak told us that Wolf was so talented when he came in that he felt like that they had to get him involved 10, 12 times a game just because he was so good. You know, little did he even know that he would carry it 30 times. And there are several guys in the NFL that mm -hmm. are of similar stature to, to Garrett Wolf. And a lot of these guys weren't nearly as productive in college as Garrett Wolf is. Even though he's 175 pounds, I still think he can be that guy that can relieve your starting running back. But it just amazes me that he looks up to a worked up. Why can't you look up to a Jerome Betts? You know, you're a little guy. Look up to a big back, you know, a powerful back. But, but that's... You know how? It's amazing when they bring that Gatorade out. That some players got to come up and get the coach's attention so he doesn't see it coming. Purple Gatorade, too. Oh, it's sticky. It's just, what, sticky. just exactly what you would expect, TCU. Marcus Jackson is in the game at quarterback right now. Hobbs still in at running back. Hobbs getting inside 25-yard line. Patterson, Patterson, he's alert. He's got his head on a swivel. 
Uh, now they're just gonna they're just gonna use old-fashioned yeah. force. Maurice Baldwin, offensive lineman, Kurt Taylor was in there. Dallas and Gary Patterson, who not only energized his team but entertained his fans in the hospitality room last night by breaking out his guitar and playing some songs. Gary's an accomplished guitarist. He's gonna be playing some sweet music tonight as TCU. Gets the victory. Our Capital One player of the game is Jeff Ballard, quarterback, the senior, 277 yards. And he accounted for four touchdowns, three on the ground, one touchdown pass. Jeff Ballard, the senior from Friendswood, Texas, wanted to stay in state and play, overshadowed by some bigger name recruits coming out of high school, say to TCU, and has put together a terrific career from the Horned Frogs. 19 and two is the starting quarterback. Well, when you talk about uh, Garrett Wolf and his size, I, I think what Maurice Drew Jones has done in the NFL is really incredible and surprised everybody. 37 to seven and Marcus Jackson. See if TCU is even going to snap the ball again. Gary Patterson in a show of class, letting the clock expire. Patterson's team wins its 11th game, taking care of business and getting the bowl season off to a rousing start. The men in purple, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl goes to TCU, 37 to seven. Patterson and Joe Novak, both of whom have done such fine jobs with their programs, reading in midfield. As TCU rolls to a 30-point victory and stifled Garrett Wolf. Great career of Garrett Wolf comes to a close, not the way he wanted it to end. He'll have a chance to play for the Scouts in the Senior Bowl, accepting mm -hmm. that invitation as well. And I think that's going to be his opportunity. You look at a Darren Sproles, how he impressed Marty Schottenheimer when he was the coach there, and he'll be able the opportunity to impress coaches down at the Senior Bowl. Let's go down to the field and Rob Stone. Well, Coach, second consecutive year with 11 victories. What does this say about your program? Well, there's just a lot of good kids and a lot of good coaches. And, you know, really, it's got to give a lot of credit to our administration and the people in Fort Worth and uh, everybody back home. You know, this has been an ongoing thing for nine years. You know, it's a chance to uh, now win 10, 10 wins and four, you know, through four out of the last five and 11 wins three out of the last four. You know, we've got a, we got a comparably young football team here. So uh, we're just going to try to get, we got to grow up a quarterback, find a go to wide receiver. But uh, we got a lot of good people coming back. Where do you guys belong in the preseason rankings for 2007? Oh, I don't know. You know, this game was for that, but, uh, you know, right now we're just glad to be 11. I'm glad I'm going to be home at Christmas time and get a chance to spend some time with my boys and my wife and, uh, you know, get a chance to do some of those things. But uh, I'm really glad for my kids and my coaches. They worked hard. You know, we've stayed together. This staff has for six years, and uh, it's a good group. You know, we didn't do all the things we needed to do tonight, but, uh, you know, we're proud of them. Defense did what they needed to do. How do you dress them post game? Well, I keep telling people, you know, no one really talked about us, but we got one of the better ones in the nation. You know, we can really run to the football. Uh, they love playing the game. That's the thing I like best about them is they just love playing, especially in big games, and uh, they played well tonight. Thanks, Coach, and happy holidays. Thank you. You too. And Rob played well might be an understatement. They held Northern Illinois to a mere 60 yards and five first downs. A couple of those coming via penalty. TCU hammers Northern Illinois 37-7 to take the San Diego County Credit Union poinsettia bowl. Right after the break, John Saunders in the game. We'll look ahead to the rest of the bowl season. When you take that field today, you've got to lay your heart on the line. And if you do that, we cannot lose. The plane crash is our past. We cannot forget that. We're not honoring them. We're disgracing them. This is where we have come. This is a national title game. Plus, we'll look at Garrett Wolf, the great running back of Northern Illinois. Across the nation, college football stadiums have gone silent for another year. But this season is far from over. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe it? Now it's bowl season, a time for campus legends to don their school colors for a final farewell, a game to cap a dream season. I love it! I love it! A chance for new beginnings, where a win can be the perfect momentum for next year. A rare opportunity for conference clashes Take home bragging rights. And for two teams, 
a shot at the ultimate front, the national championship. Take it all the way! Oh, my! ESPN and bowl season. College football still lives here. Welcome to ESPN 2's College Football Bowl Breakdown Special. And welcome everybody. I'm John Saunders. We have a great offense right for you here at this table. First of all, we got Ed Cunningham. He's going to protect our quarterbacks, Doug Flutie and Todd Blackledge. And then we've got the deep threat in Desmond Howard. If we have to go on defense, we're in trouble. <laughs> trouble, because all we have is me. You guys must have some great bowl memories. A lot of fun memories for me. I, I'll tell you what, we go all the way back to Memphis here. Of course, I lose my bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> we drop a two-point conversion on a frozen field in Memphis. And it, it was a cold, cold day down in Memphis, Tennessee on a frozen field, and we came up short. Of course, always story of my life. <laughs> well, Doug, I think the Gator Bowl was my breakout, my breakout bowl game. We played Ole Miss, and I had two touchdowns. As good a game I had, the running game was so impressive that our offensive line won MVP of the bowl. But I think this game really propelled me into the next season. Now, unfortunately for Desmond, the next season ended in the Rose Bowl against my Washington Huskies. Sorry, Desmond. <laughs> this is one of those moments that, you know, well, look at the, Where's I fall down it? on my face there. They could have found a better uh, highlight. But, <laughs> Where are you? You know, the best part about that game is winning a national championship as a senior. You couldn't be any better. Well, this was, uh, this was not a bowl game. This was a game over Nebraska my senior year that led to us uh, making it to the national championship game, playing Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, but a lot of great bowl memories for me playing at Penn State. All right, now, there's a huge argument going on around the nation as to whether or not Michigan should have been in that championship game, whether or not it should have been Florida. There are some people that suggest that the reason Florida is in there is because of the reputation of the SEC. They say they're the best conference in the country. Do we agree? <laughs> well, that was the argument all year <laughs> long. All we kept hearing was how great the SEC is, you know, and, and that they had to fight through that schedule to get there. Came down, Michigan, Florida, who should go? Well, there's three big bowl matchups this year, and we should follow the one-loss record throughout the bowls and see how each conference does. Right now, I thought going into that Michigan deserved that spot, but I think the bowls will de determine what was the stronger conference, guys. I agree with you, too. I don't know who anointed the SEC, the top, the top conference conference year in and year I think you should judge it on a yearly basis and the job that I have Doug is I get to go see these teams live and I saw Florida play live twice and then I saw them play against FSU and to be the best conference to me you have to dominate especially opponents who are lesser uh, le lesser talent than you are now they may have um, a competitive conference but I don't know about saying the best conference it's just it's, it's too early to tell that I think the bowl games would determine that to me, the Southeastern Conference is the best conference. I think Florida should uh, be there. I, we can all talk all day long, but I got to see the SC a lot, as Todd did, and I think they're the best conference top to bottom. I still think, you know, 10 years ago when the Big Ten and the SEC used to play, it was all about the speed, and the SEC had more speed than the Big Ten had, and, and that showed up in bowl games. That's not the, the problem anymore. The Big Ten has caught the SEC in terms of speed, and I think if you take Ohio State and Michigan, they could play with anybody at the top of any conference, but when you get to teams three, four, five, and six, I still think think the SEC is the top conference, top to bottom, and I also think playing in SEC stadiums on the road is much tougher than any other league in the country. You don't think Wisconsin would be competitive in the I SEC? I think they'd be competitive, but I don't think they're as good as, let's say, LSU. Is that the number three team in the SEC? I don't think they're that caliber. We're going to get a chance to see Wisconsin match up with Arkansas. Right, We're going right. to see Tennessee exactly. and Penn State. We're right. going to see Ohio State, Florida, and we can determine it after the fact and see if they truly deserve to be there. If you take a look at the numbers, the ball breakdown by conference, the SEC has the argument. They got nine teams going to balls, but the ACC had a terrible year. And they <laughs> you, eight, you threw the whammy on them early I, this year, John. I killed them the first week of the season. We're calling them the best conference in the country. Big 12 with eight. You see the Big 10 with seven, Pac-10 at six. Big Ten was in there twice. Oh, Big Ten, 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 ten was that's that's in the Big Ten. Seven that's why you're in there. Like like the 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 ball ball the the SEC, that's just a start. You get nine teams in, but right. how do they finish? That's going right. to tell the story. How do they play? We'll see it. We'll see it through the bowl system. <laughs> yeah, I happen to agree with the guys Playoffs immediately bowl. to my left that I think they get that reputation because they say they're the best conference year after year. Of course, we have a game coming up, the Poinsettia Bowl right now. Let's go out to Reese Davis. 
All right, John, you know, that's another example, guys, of Big Ten bias that people get accused of. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. you put, put them in there twice trying to get teams in bowl games. Guys, we're talking about conference bias and, and how you select teams for bowl games. We're going to see a little bit of that on an individual basis in this game tonight. How do you evaluate individual players who play in so-called mid-major conferences? Garrett Wolf leads the nation in rushing, and if he can get 128 yards tonight here in Ladanian Tomlinson's house, Mark, he'll pass him on the all-time rushing list in college football. Well, I think you've got to evaluate him against his major competition. You look at the Ohio State, the Michigan games, the big teams he played against, particularly this year, 285 total yards. They're going to talk about his size, and I mean the scouts. He's five foot seven 175 pounds but the bottom line he gets the job done throughout his career he's averaged over six and a half yards per carry yeah and i want to say this if he's going to get 100 yards today he better bring his lunch because it's <laughs> going to be a full day's work because tcu has not given up a hundred yard rusher this entire year they have an outstanding defense, number four in the country against the run, number four overall total defense, and they have five former running backs on that defense. They can run. So it's, if he gets 100 yards, he's going to earn it. And both teams thrilled to just be playing in a bowl game. It's become old hat to TCU, but Northern Illinois, they've had a couple of seasons, a 10-win season back in 03, and they didn't go to a bowl, finished runner-up in the MAC last year, didn't make it to a bowl. What about the importance for a team just making it to a bowl game, Lou? Oh, there are a lot of positive things. Number one, you get extra practice. I always felt the losing team should have to practice for a bowl game, but not only do you get extra practice, it's just great for recruiting. It's great for your overall program. But I want to say this. The Bulls have to select the team that they think will be the most appealing to the fans and bring the most to the bowl game, and that's why Northern Illinois is here. Spoken like a true coach, more practices. As a former player, forget about the practices. It's about the swag. It's about the payoff of having a great season. It's the gifts you get, the iPods, the Xboxes. Are you kidding me? It's fun time. And, you know, and the people, the players here at the Poinsettia Bowl, part of their gift bag, the iPod Nano, Although I'm not sure it's quite big enough to take care of Gary Patterson, the TCU's coach, all of his musical selection, 9,200 songs on his iPod. Can you believe how valuable we are, Lou? Oh, Just I... two of us in the studio the entire year. Once we leave, they've got to replace us, not with two analysts, but four <laughs> back in the studio. Isn't that amazing? Hey, hey I want to tell you, 9,400 songs on iPod, I couldn't listen to all of them before I died. <laughs> well, you know what, Mark, though? I saw all the guys reliving their glory years, the great plays mm -hmm. they made in bowl games and so forth. I don't think that we're going to show one frame of video from Mark May emerging as Super no. Bowl champion here at no. Qualcomm Stadium, formerly known as the Murph, but might flash that ring a time or two before the night's over, John. <laughs> Reese, thanks a lot. We've got all kinds of rings. We got them on board here, too. Garrett Wolf. Well, this guy, he deserves some sort of a ring. One of the best running backs in the country. Just a little guy, but he'll get through the hole in a hurry. Also part of the show, we'll talk about the Rose Bowl. Michigan against USC. It has the feel of a national championship game. And the Heisman Trophy winner, Troy Smith, going for a national title. The ESPN2 Bowl Breakdown Special, brought to you by Lincoln, Reach Higher, and ESPN Game Plan. Buy your bowl game package on ESPN.com's Game Plan online and catch over 20 bowl games live and on demand. One Bowl Week, December 26th through January 1st on ESPN. This is a classic Rose Bowl moment. 1979, Michigan versus USC. Charles White looked to extend the Trojans' lead in the second quarter. With a big fumble. They say he is over. The controversial score provided the winning margin, 17 to 10 for USC, and a share of the national championship. Watch the 2007 Rose Bowl presented by City New Year's Day only on ABC. Well, the Michigan Wolverines are there. They think they should be in the national championship game, but they will come to play. Now, remember back in September, we weren't sure how good Michigan was until they faced Notre Dame and Brady Quinn. Throws off the hands of Carlson, picked off by Prescott Burgess, returns at 31 yards for the touchdown, 7-0 lead. And then Chad Henney hooking up with Mario Manningham and they just absolutely torched the defensive backfield of Notre Dame. Henny and Manningham hooking up 
another time for 20 yards this time. Manning had four receptions, 137 yards, and three touchdowns. Michigan rolls over number two Notre Dame, 47 to 21. So, Bo Schembechler passes away right before the game against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Number one facing number two in Columbus. There was Troy Smith. And who does Troy Smith go to usually? Ted Ginn Jr. 39 yards. Ohio State takes a 21 to 7 lead. Then later in the second, Ohio State up 21 14. Smith to Anthony Gonzalez. Eight yards in this touchdown. Ohio State's up 28 14. Antonio Pittman handoff. And he goes 56 yards. He had 139 yards on the day. Ohio State up 35 to 24. But Michigan would not wilt. Early in the fourth, they come right back. Mike Hart from a yard out in Michigan is within 35 31 or rather 35 31 they are up and then Ohio State puts the icing on the cake Troy Smith to Rubisky 13 yards but Lloyd Carr thinks there should be a rematch. It's going to be uh, from a, a great controversy. Uh, I don't care uh, who gets selected. And because, um, you know, I just think that um, based on some of the comments uh, the Florida coach has made in the last two weeks, uh, campaigning strenuously uh, for a berth in the championship game and making some statements about Michigan uh, that I think were uh, inappropriate, um, uh, you know, I think that, that that certainly is going to stir a controversy. And who knows what that's going to lead to. That was a couple of weeks ago. If you compare Michigan and Florida right now, obviously pretty comparable teams. Defensively, you see the opponents' points per game, points per game for each team right about the same too. So, But it's numbers that don't tell things. And Urban Meyer basically came out and said, I don't know what Lloyd Carr is talking about. I didn't say anything <laughs> about Michigan. But the fact was he was out there calling for a playoff and saying that if they didn't get in, it was wrong. You know, Florida has the ability to get there, and if he, if Urban Meyer wants to sit there and lobby for his team, he deserves a lot. Go get it. It's your opportunity to win a national championship. If he can, if he says one or two things that might influence a couple of voters, and they get those extra votes and make it to the championship game, great for him. He got there. But the thing was that I saw was the the number one team in the nation at Ohio State. Michigan went to the number one team, lost by three points in a tough game, and that was their only loss of the season. Right. And I think that if, if things were different mm -hmm. and the national championship game wasn't on the line, that Michigan would have finished ahead of Florida in the polls. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Had USC beat UCLA, then the rankings would have been Ohio State 1, USC 2, Michigan 3, and Florida 4. But since they lost, people didn't want to see the rematch. Urban Meyer started the lobbying for his team, and they got a national ch championship game. I cannot say that Florida doesn't deserve to be in the game. All I can say is Michigan was a more dominant team throughout the course of the season from what I've seen live. And at that point, they were the number two team in the country. Now, for them not to play for two weeks, then fall behind Florida, that's just the way the BCS is set up. And to Michigan's credit, no coach and no player has came out and complained about it. So at the end of the day, if you don't run the tables like Auburn did in 2004, then you put everything, your destiny or your fate, into the hands of the voters and then let the chips fall where they may. I think that's the big key is where's the loss? And I agree with you, Doug, that if, if it wouldn't have been for a national championship, Michigan may have finished ahead. And I think that might be a problem in the system there was some back and forth about who people were voting for but here's the way I fought we don't have a playoff there is not one there's not going to be one probably in our lifetime so the playoff happens during the regular season so to speak well for Michigan they got a bad draw they had to go to Columbus and play sorry but that playoff they lost you know, I agree with that. I, I think that was like a playoff game and that was they had they took their shot and, and they didn't get their shot done. They came up a little short. They were second place in a very good conference. I said earlier in the show, I think the SEC is still the best conference in college football. And the champion of that conference, the University of Florida, I think is the next in line to take a shot at Ohio State. And I was at the game that Florida lost at Auburn, a very difficult place to play, as difficult as going into Columbus. Now, Ohio State was the number one ranked team. But that game that Florida lost going into Auburn, they controlled the first half. They had a block punt in the second half. Very easily could have won that game, could have finished undefeated. I think Florida deserves to be the team to take the next shot at Ohio State. You got the SEC on that side. Uh, okay, yeah, I see January full disclosure, we, sh we should mention that one guy on this panel did play for Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> in full disclosure. Now, that? even though it's not for went to school, school in Michigan. Michigan right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> the game is going to be great no matter what. Yeah. It, it has the feel of a national championship game, USC against Michigan. This is old school, really, of the Rose Bowl. This is what we would have seen before the BCS. Right. So this game still lines up to me as, as the feeling of a national championship game. It really game. does have that feel. These are two great teams that either one could have been in a national championship game. And, it, you know, they're very physical football teams. They come at it. They get, but the big plays are going to be made by their receivers. Mario Mar Manningham, Adrian Arrington, Steve Breston from the Michigan side, all making big plays. These, these are the type of guys who can throw it up for grabs. They go get it in a crowd. Dwayne Jarrett for USC, one hand in it. These are guys that are going to determine this game for one team or the other. The one that goes up and makes the big play. No, I agree with you. I think that the, the game is going to be won in the trenches. When you see, um, oh, when you see USC's offensive linemen, when they played against UCLA, they got, they got their butts handed to them by the defensive ends of the Bruins. Justin Hickman and Bruce Davis just came out and controlled that game from the beginning to the end. If they can't protect John David Booty, Steve Smith and Dwayne Jarrett are going to be null and void, and that's their biggest weapons on the offense. So, in my opinion, it's going to be one of the trenches. We have Lamar Woodley, Sean Crable, and Prescott Burgess on Michigan's defensive side of the ball. And Ron English, he's going to let the dogs loose and see what comes of that offensive line. And I think it's all about Ron English in this game. Ron was a, it was a great job by Lloyd Carr to, to raise him up the defensive coordinator. Dwayne Walker from UCLA gave him the blueprint of how to beat USC, and you hit it right on the head, Desmond. It's about pressure off the edge. And Hickman and Davis are very good defensive ends. Lamar Woodley, I think, is in a class by himself. You always say he's an offensive lineman. You don't want to block somebody who has both speed and power, and that's what Woodley has. And I think with Allen Branch inside, they're not going to be able to double-team him, Todd, and I think that that is going to slow them down. Listen, John David Booty's a great quarterback when he doesn't get hit in the face, but he got hit in the face a lot against UCLA and was not very effective. He did, you know, and I think this game does have the feel of a national championship game, but it, I'm interested to see if one team has a little more sense of urgency than the other. Both these teams thought they were going to be frying bigger fish at the end of the season. This is still a huge game. If one team is a little bit more ready to play, a little bit more prepared, that will give them an edge in this ball game. I think the key to the game is Mike Hart, the running back for Michigan. I think as he goes, the Michigan football team goes. Yes, Chad Henney had a good year. Yes, the wide receivers make big plays, but Mike Hart is the heart and soul of the Michigan team. If he gets off and if he runs well, Michigan will win this game. If USC wants to have a chance to win, they must do a great job of stopping Mike Hart and putting the ball in Chad Henney's hands to win the football game. You know, if you're going to go and back up what you guys say about Florida, if you think about it, the two teams in this game lost their last games of the season, so right. it was somewhat like a playoff, all right? Who's going to win this game? Team that scores the most points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Michigan. I like their the, the physicality of that team. I've said it since day one this year. They are one of the most physical teams in college football, if not the most physical. They matched up real well against Ohio State last week. What do you think, Desmond? I agree with you. I think that um, the offensive tackles of USC are going to have a, a hard time going against that Michigan defense. I, I'm picking Michigan too. You know, it's kind of sad, and I think you'll agree, Desmond, to say that both these teams may not want to be in the Rose Bowl. It's, it's terrible because it's such a great game. USC coming off a of state lost Michigan thinking we should be in the national championship game to me it's whoever can overcome that the soonest and I think Michigan because listen there is an outside scenario where they could win the AP national championship very outside but it's there and so I think they might have a little more to play for I think they'll get over that hangover a little earlier in the ballgame and win I agree I, I think Michigan's gonna win as well and I think for the same reason I think they have more incentive more to prove it's been a long time since they've played a lot of people have taken their shots at Michigan all through these last month They've got a lot to prove, a lot of incentive to go out and play well in the Rose Bowl. So the SEC came around a little bit. There's no SEC team playing hey, in the Rose Bowl. Uh, <laughs> disclosure, I'm a Pac-10 guy, and I went with Michigan. So. <laughs> that, well, that's very, very, very surprising in that as well. But both teams might have been disappointed, but I think that will change as soon as they take the turf for the Rose Bowl and get ready to start an outstanding game. Stick around. We're just getting rolling here. Garrett Wolf. He's coming up. You haven't seen this guy play this year. You'll want to watch tonight's game. We will also look ahead to the national championship game and talk about Troy Smith and the Ohio State Buckeyes as they get ready to face Florida. Welcome back to ESPN2's College Football Bowl Breakdown Special.
This much we do know. Our national championship game will be between Florida and Ohio State. The Buckeyes, the undefeated team. You see the records against top 25 teams. Ohio State outscores just about everybody in the nation. Well, actually, they did every game this year. Otherwise, they wouldn't be undefeated. And at bonus points for games, their defense are both, both pretty good. Ohio State has been dominant all year long, clearly. Does Florida have a chance in this game? Florida has a chance. There's no doubt about it. They got real aggressive last week, uh, last week, in their last game in the SEC championship. They got aggressive running all these trick plays and all. But the, was, the Ohio State defense is tough. They pressure the quarterback, 37 sacks this season. And when you get pressure on the quarterback, it creates turnovers. 21 interceptions by the secondary. And it all starts up front, being physical, being aggressive, getting in the quarterback's face, making them throw it up for grabs. And you make big plays on defense. So. Ohio State last week looked vulnerable against Michigan, but I think they, they stay the course and, and take it to Florida. I think that's key that you hit on the defense because I'm looking at Florida's defense. And they have a great safety in Reggie Nelson. Reggie Nelson is a, uh, one of the top safeties in the country. They lost their, offense, their, their defensive tackle, Marcus Thomas. He made some bad decisions, but now he's off the team. But Greg, Greg Matson and Charlie Strong, co-defensive coordinators, they do a wonderful job getting those guys in position to make plays. Now, once they go up against the Buckeyes, they're going to face a, a, a well-balanced attack that they probably haven't seen all season long. The Buckeyes and Jim Trestle, they do a wonderful job. They can go five wide. They can go conventional. They're going to show them all type of looks that I don't know if they're going to be ready for. I like Florida's defense, but I don't know if they're going to be prepared for all the different looks that the Buckeyes can give them. And, and offensively, I don't know that uh, Florida's going to be able to establish the run consistently. They haven't been able to do it all year. So then you have to look at their senior quarterback, Chris Leak. He's been a bit of a front runner in pressure situations. Even early this year, he made some mistakes. He had a run against Tennessee where he slid before the first down marker. But I saw things at the end of the year where he started to look more like a leader, especially against Arkansas in the SEC championship game. He had a chance to run out of bounds. He tucked it, went in for the touchdown. And I think if Chris Lee can take that one more step in the big game, and that's a big question, if he can do that, I think Florida has a chance. Well, I think he has to play well, but Ed, I think if Florida has a chance to win, they have to run the football. I think Deshaun Wynn has to be the best back on the field from the state of Ohio. Pittman and Wells, the two Ohio State backs, are from Akron. Deshaun Wynn is from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's been somewhat of an enigma in his career. He's been up and down. He's played great. He's played poor. He's got to play well. He's got all the tools. If he can run the football and open up some things against this Ohio State defense, that'll take some pressure off of Chris Leak. And they've got the skill guys outside to make big plays if they can run the football a little bit and have some balance. Like Jim Valvano said back in 1983 before they faced Houston, his NC State team, and everyone was saying, they don't have a chance. He said, we got to have a chance. We're in the game, right? <laughs> We're playing the game. They so you're saying, saying there's a chance. You tell me how far that chance goes. I don't know. Let me consult with my Michigan guy over here. You know, there's only one <laughs> team that could beat Michigan. Right. Right. Who was yeah. that? That was Ohio, Ohio State. State yeah. So I think we got to go with Ohio State, right? <laughs> of course. We're going with Ohio State over here on the Big Ten bandwagon. Let's see what the SEC bandwagon talks about. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to pick Ohio State. They've been an impressive team. And like we said, they run the ball effectively. They have uh, Gonzalez out on the, on, the, on the edge. They have um, they have Troy again, Jr. on one edge. So it's hard to defend them. So I'm going with Ohio State. I think if, if you look at what they did Ohio State through the season, they had two games, one versus two, at Texas and against Michigan. And Troy Smith was just silky smooth in both of those games. It's so hard to pick against Troy Smith in this game. I, I just he, He's played so well in big games already. He has, and uh, I, I've been singing the praises of the SEC. I'm going to stick with them. I'm going to pick Florida in this <laughs> game. They don't have to be better in Ohio State week in and week out, just on one night, and I think they can be in this game. You know, I think the Florida defense will play with great inspiration. I was a member of a Penn State team. Two years in a row, we played in bowl games against the Heisman Trophy winner, against USC in 1982, and against Georgia and Herschel Walker in 1983, and in both cases, our defense rose to the occasion and saw it as a tremendous challenge to go against the Heisman Trophy winner. I think Florida's defense will play an outstanding game against Troy Smith and Ohio State on January 8th. By the way, I'm not off the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I live in Ohio. I was getting ready to say. I'm take some heat when I go. You, you the you're going to have to <laughs> call the movers and get them to ready to pick up your furniture and send it all to Florida when you get back home. Stick around. We still have the point set of all coming up and Garrett Wolf was ready to thrill your every need.
Peugeot. Giorgio Armani. At Macy's. Denver Omelette Breakfast Burrito. New at Sonic. Everything you love about a Denver Omelette wrapped up in a warm flour tortilla. Sonic's new Denver Omelette Breakfast Burrito. Try one today with a refreshing cranberry juice. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. It's ready. Introducing Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. Fusion's hydrating emollients and lubricants form an invisible layer that protects your skin from the first stroke to the last, adding more comfort to your shave. Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. Find the perfect gift. Right now with Zales Diamond Circle Collection. Save up to $200 on these Diamond Circle pendants. Now just $2.99 each. Find the perfect gift at Zales, the diamond store. Dallas Cowboy Roy Williams covers more ground than just about anyone in the NFL. I'll be right there. But even he can't be there for every child that needs his help. Hey, you're good with kids, aren't you? What about me? Maybe you can give him a hand. Help the NFL and United Way strengthen your community. Volunteer at unitedway.org. Giorgio Armani at Macy's. Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Superstar athletes, thrilling attractions, ESPNPersonAfghan.com. Presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Well, if you think Garrett Wolf beat up on the little guys, he didn't. You should have seen him against Ohio State. He just ran all over their very tough defense. TCU, though, has not given up a 100-yard rusher thus far this season. That game is coming up next. And this is what's coming up the rest of the week here on ESPN. On Thursday, the Las Vegas Bowl, BYU against Oregon. On Friday, New Orleans, Rice and Troy. Saturday, PapaJohns.com. USF against ECU at 1 o'clock, followed by New Mexico and San Jose State. And then the Armed Forces Bowl, Tulsa facing Utah at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. All games on ESPN and ESPN2 will be seen in high definition. When we come back, we're going to talk about coaching and some of the jobs that are still open, some that have been filled, and some of the surprises that teams like Alabama are struggling right now to get coaches. Meanwhile, the two coaches tonight aren't struggling. They know they're already in a bowl game, and that game is coming up in just about 25 minutes' time. The Huskies and the Horned Frogs stick around. Some news and notes from players around the country. Jevin Sneed, the backup quarterback to Colt McCoy, has seen the light. Colt McCoy is a freshman, and as a result, he's not going to ever get to play, so he's transferring to Ole Miss. Other news. Starting defensive tackle Ed Johnson of Penn State has been suspended for the outback bowl. Brian Storer has a broken arm. He'll miss the Holiday Bowl. And Ike Whitaker, the quarterback for Virginia Tech, back up to enter alcohol rehab. Now, recent coaching moves as well. Interesting ones at Stanford. Former NFL quarterback and University of San Diego coach Jim Harbaugh. He did do a great job at the University of San Diego. We want to talk more about that. The Packers offensive coordinator, Jeff Jagosinski has gotten the Boston College job and of course Florida International hiring University of Miami offensive line coach Mario Cristobal. Now it's interesting because Jim Harbaugh not, he did a great job where he was but this is a, a big job in a hurry for a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience. Yeah, normally you talk about a guy making little steps and you know going to be a coordinator and taking little steps on the way up. This is a huge step for Jim Harbaugh but I'm really happy for him. You know Jim Harbaugh like myself his dad was a coach Jack Harbaugh, very successful for many, many years, has kind of been a mentor to Jim in coaching at the University of San Diego, a, a Division I AA non-scholarship program. I think he won 27 of his last 29 games there as a head coach, so it's a huge step, but I think he's excited.
excited about it. He, he brings a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and obviously the Stanford Cardinal right now is a football program that needs a great infusion of, of energy and enthusiasm. So it's a great opportunity for Jim Harbaugh. Since Ty Willingham left Stanford, they kind of just fell under the radar now. Alabama is a team that's surprising to everyone, including myself, because you would think with their job open, it would get filled in a hurry. It did not. Now, if you take a look at the history of the Alabama coaches over the last little while, Mike DeBose, he got fired. We know he had some problems down there. Dennis Francione decided to leave. Mike Price, well, he never got to coach the team because of things that happened off the field. And Mike Shula had a great year last year. But this year he gets fired as he comes back to the pack. So as a result, Alabama is sitting right now without a quarterback and without a coach rather. They got a quarterback. They don't have a coach. And bringing in Lou Holtz right now. Lou, I, first question is quite simply. This used to be a marquee job. Is it still a marquee job right now? I think it's a marquee job today, but it became a marquee job because Bear Bryant made a good job. Whatever becomes a great job because the type of coach that goes there and what kind of job they do. I don't think the University of Alabama will have any difficulty filling it. I think they're going in a different direction. I think they're waiting for the pro season to be over. They're looking at Nick Saban down in Miami. They're looking at some other assistant coaches, and they will hire an outstanding coach because Alabama means tradition. Tradition means winning championships. Lou, were you surprised by the hiring of Stanford of Jim Harbaugh? Stability. They need stability. I, I was surprised, but I want to say this. I think it's a great move. I've known Jim Harbaugh since he was a player. I played a lot of golf with him. He's a great football coach, and I don't think he's going to have any trouble adjusting. You can say, well, they didn't have scholarships, et cetera. But Jim Harbaugh played in the pros. He played at the University of Michigan. He knows what a big-time program's like, and he did a tremendous job at San Diego. His offense was absolutely incredible. He's personable. He'll be able to recruit and he'll take his dad with him as an assistant coach. All right, Lou, we'll see you in just a few moments time. Of course, uh, uh, Jim Harbaugh's father also coached at Western Michigan, so I like the guy <laughs> 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 as well. Now, let's go back to that Alabama job and, and whether or not it's a marquee job and whether or not they can get a marquee name. Well, here's the problem with Alabama. I mean, it's a tough job. And, and I like Mike Shula, and I was disappointed he got fired. But I'm not saying he should have kept his job. He was 1-11 against the teams that Alabama has to beat. Tennessee, LSU, and Auburn. Those are the teams that all the people that follow Alabama want the Crimson Tide to beat. My thing is, if they're waiting for Nick Saban or whoever it is that they hire, their next coach, what they need and what that program needs more than anything is stability. Hire a guy, give him a long-term contract. Even if you want to give him a 10-year contract because that program program needs stability. If you look at some of the great programs right now in college football, stability in the coaching staff is a consistent thing with those programs. In Alabama, those kids, they don't know who's coming or going. And it's, it's been a very difficult situation for those kids that are in the program, the kids they're recruiting. Nobody knows what the situation there at Alabama is going to be for the next couple years. And stability is what I think Alabama needs more than anything. And I think everybody's freaking out about the recruiting. Well, let's not forget that they're in a dark period right now. Coaches cannot contact recruits until January 5th. NFL season will be long gone by then, and they'll have an answer from Nick Saban if that is the guy. But one guy that I think is getting passed over, and he's not getting looked at for Alabama, is Bo Pelini at LSU. You, when you go down and start looking at coordinators, okay, can they make the transition from a sergeant to a general? I know it's only one game, but Bo Pelini, after Frank Solich was fired, did an amazing job at Nebraska in that Alamo Bowl, and I think this guy deserves a chance. He is somebody who has proven time and again that he can coach, and he coaches hard, but he coaches fair, and I think that's what kids today look for. They, they don't mind tough guys, right. but they just want to be trally, uh, feated, uh, treated fairly, and I think Bo Pelini does that. No, I agree with you. I thought Bo Pelini was going to be at the top of the list for the Michigan State job, but he didn't get that job. I, he's an excellent candidate. I think he should get a job sometime soon. I think that Randy Shannon down in Miami was an excellent selection. Randy Shannon is a guy who, he's a Miami native. He went to New Orleans High. He was on their 1987 national championship team. He came back to Miami to coach, became their defensive coordinator in 2001 and they've had a stellar defense ever since I mean even this year at six and six they have the fifth ranked total defensive team in the country so Randy Shannon he knows the politics he knows the culture it's a totally different culture down there trust me I live there I know and he knows the region he's going to do a great job recruiting down there I think he was a wonderful selection for the Hurricanes yeah he's, he's going to have a big challenge ahead of him to turn that program around from a distance discipline standpoint at Boston College now they they went and got the offensive coordinator from the Green Bay Packers Jeff 
Let's get it right. Jay Gazinski. You got it. <laughs> it's a reach. What are you going to do? I think the bigger story there for Boston College was Tom O'Brien leaving and going what everyone viewed as a lateral move over to NC State, up and going, and his contract was coming up. Was he going to make more money? It might be his last chance for a big contract deal. He takes the job down at NC State and really surprised a lot of people surrounding Boston College. And this hire is, is kind of a move, and it's actually – uh, Gene DiFilippo's first big hire at Boston College. Well, you know, if the alumni of Boston College had <laughs> stepped up maybe and come up there with... There was actually <laughs> money in place, which is pretty amazing. Okay. Uh, we'll find out what choice they made <laughs> as they've made their choice to Jay Gazinski. Dan Nicholson, he has turned around this program at NIU. It's coming up. Do you have the code? The ultimate code of seduction. The Armani Code. The Dragons for Men by George. The 2006 Heisman Trophy is awarded to Troy Smith of the Ohio State University. Thank you. Only O.J. Simpson won by a larger margin than Troy Smith. And you can see a career starter against ranked teams. This guy just delivers. But I, I think what really impressed people this year is everyone came into the season thinking, okay, here's a guy. He's going to scramble around. He's going to run for a lot of yardage. That wasn't the case. This guy was a quarterback in the pocket. He turned into a quarterback this year, no doubt about it. I think it took him half the season to get over 50 yards rushing. <laughs> he started really, I mean, he became a quarterback, stood in the pocket, threw the ball, and even when he scrambled, his eyes were down the field making plays. And this was the big scramble against Penn State where he spun around, stayed in the pocket, and let it fly down the field. The pressure was on this kid from day one, and he really excelled in the big games. Like Ed said earlier, silky smooth in the big games. No, you're right about that. And what's so impressive about Troy is that he's a competitor. The kid does not, he's an unflappable. He does not know how to give up. He's a guy, I, I played with a great competitor, Brett Favre. He reminds me when Brett was in his heyday and Warren Sapp was down in Tampa, Brett and Warren Sapp used to jaw each other each time. If, if Warren Sapp would sack Brett, Brett would come back and say, don't worry about it, I'm going to get you next play. That's the same type of competitive drive I see in Troy Smith. It's like he doesn't look at, Tro at um, Jim Trestle for the answer. He tells Jim Trestle, don't worry about this, coach. I got this. I think the, the play that really sent me over the top and made me realize that Troy had turned himself into a quarterback not just a running athletic quarterback, was against Texas at the end of the half. They had the one-on-one -on -one coverage on Ginn to the outside. He recognized it right away. I don't know if it was a side adjust or not. It may have been. Ginn runs right by his guy. Not the hardest throw in the world. The guy was wide open. But to be able to see that, Todd, and start to survey the field, this was a guy. I played with Mark Brunell in college. Mark had to become a passer in the pocket, and he did. And I, that's what I saw happen with Troy Smith yeah. this year. All you guys have mentioned about his development as a quarterback this year, and the one statistic that really stands out for a quarterback is touchdown to interception ratio. This year, he threw 30 touchdown passes against only five interceptions. Great decision making is part of his development as a quarterback. The first time I ever saw Troy Smith throw the football, was the summer before his senior year in high school at Glenville High School in Cleveland. He was at the Elite 11 quarterback camp out in California. A lot of big-name quarterbacks were out there. Vince Young, Ben Olsen, Tyler Palco. And when I watched these guys go through drills and throw the football, Troy Smith threw the ball as well as any of them. And I knew right then this guy was a guy, if he kept working on it and kept developing his skills as a quarterback, he would be an outstanding quarterback. And he's got the skill set as a thrower and an athlete to play at the next level. Well, that, that's the next question. The fact that he is about 5'11", 6 feet tall, which doesn't seem to be a problem for some other quarterbacks sitting right, <laughs> sitting right next to me right here. But just the same, Mel Kuyper Jr., who, of course, is our draft guru, has him saying, possibly in the lower part of the first round, not dropping to the second I'll round. I'll tell you what, he's a first rounder, no doubt about it. He's got the ability, he's played the game as a short quarterback, he's played the game from his perspective his whole life. He knows no different. The game's, he's become a pocket passer, the game's gonna stay the same for him. No, I agree with you, he's a first round quarterback, there's no doubt about that. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. Uh, he's got it. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, right. he's got it. Exactly. Vince Young had it last year. Troy's got it this year. We will find out very, very soon in the national championship game against Florida because that defense is going to go and get after him. Stick around. We're coming up to the point set of all. There's Garrett Wolf again. It is going to be Northern Illinois and TCU.
What are you? The ESPN2 Bowl Breakdown Special, brought to you by ESPN Game Plan. Buy your bowl game package on ESPN.com's Game Plan Online and catch over 20 bowl games live and on demand. This is a fun week already, and we're not even into ESPN Bowl week. <laughs> but as you look down all the bowl games that will be played out into January, what's the one that catches your eye? Well, the one that's going to be fun for me is out in the Fiesta Bowl to see Boise State and Oklahoma go at it because we everybody wants to know how good Boise State is. They went undefeated this year. They could have been in the national championship game, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have that schedule, but we get to see how good they are. And on the flip side of that, you got Oklahoma, Adrian Peterson getting a chance to get back out on the field, a guy that probably – could have gone after the Heisman with Troy Smith and been number one, you know, number one, number two, number three guy. Had a great year. It's going to be fun to see him back on the field. Yeah, if he would have stayed healthy, um, Troy Smith wouldn't have won by that larger margin, trust me. I want to see the Holiday Bowl when you have Cal versus Texas. And Cal started off the season on a down note. They got embarrassed in Knoxville by Tennessee, but this is their opportunity to really end the season on a strong note. I want to see how Nate Long, short of quarterback, running back Marshawn Lynch, and wide receiver Deshaun Jackson play against that Texas defense. Aaron, now, Aaron Ross just won the Thorpe Award, so I want to see him and Deshaun Jackson go head-to-head. -head. Where do you go to have fun? Las Vegas, right? Yes, well, let's yes, go to sir. Las Vegas. <laughs> Unfortunately, what happens in Vegas is not going to stay there because it's going to be on ESPN. But when you look at BYU against Oregon, BYU very quietly ran off nine straight wins. They ran away with the Mountain West Conference. John Beck threw 31 touchdowns against five interceptions. He is spectacular. I think this is a next-level quarterback. For Oregon, they come limping into the game. They had three losses at the end. The huge loss to Oregon State on a block kick. How are they going to go? But the intrigue comes with the offensive coordinator for Oregon, Gary Croton. Gary Croton was the head coach at BYU. He's now at Oregon. Bronco Mendenhall, who was his defensive coordinator, now the head coach. Nice little back and forth yep. between those two absolutely, guys. Absolutely, absolutely. Good matchup. Most interesting game out there outside the championship game to me is the Sugar Bowl. I think both teams, LSU and Notre Dame, have a lot to prove, a chance to make a huge statement. For LSU, two tough losses on the road at Auburn, at Florida. They want to prove that they're as good as anybody in that league, anybody in the country. They've got the talent to do